Welcome back to beautiful Peoria, Illinois for the final round of the Discraft Ledgestone Open presented by Bushnell. Tied at the top, Waisaki, Barella, and Burr. Waisaki looking to three-peat while Burr and Barella both look to snag their first Elite Series win. Who takes the title? You'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. Here are your Canna current conditions. Another beautiful day in Illinois. Temps pretty mild, humidity not too bad. Wind down. On-site scoreboard. See Macbeth leading that chase card 10K to the winner. Solid day at the office. And welcome to the booth in Milwaukee. Ian Anderson, that is Philo Brathwaite. We're back to Eureka Lake temp course for our yes, final sir. round. Three-way tie at the top, Philo. It's going to be exciting. That's for sure. It's really a five-horse race at this point. Figure Macbeth on the chase card, three strokes back. Yeah, he's definitely still in, it. in the hunt. It's going to need a little bit of help from these guys up on top, and he's going to have to go El Scorcho, you know, the beast mode to really catch him. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a fun battle to watch. It's all unravel. Yeah, don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. Cannot wait. Oh. Here's what they did round one on this same Eureka Temp course as kind of a preview for today. Burr, the class of the field there, shooting his highest rated round ever. Yeah, no doubt. Got off to a hot start, has stayed right here in the mix, whole competition right where you want to be. You look to him to try to repeat another effort like that. It's out there for him. That one guy, though, Paul McBeth shooting at four. Oh. Are they not tied? I'm, I'm, I did a boo-boo there. Last year, we had the lightning shenanigans on hole four. Yeah, definitely a strange finish to a tournament. Not ideal. So we had the Heimberg and Waisaki co-champions. There's Calvin right there. How about that lightning? That's close enough. Yeah, that's <laughs> right at the end of the lake. Look Ooh, at that one. Look at that. That's like hole 14. Okay. That made contact. Yep. It sure did. Oh, man. Yeah. And looks like Rick got the good, the good trophy. They flipped for it? Probably. Probably. So Maybe who got the last birdie. Yeah. So excuse me, Rick with a one-stroke lead over Brella and Burr. Apologies there. Morum two back, Macbeth three. So Randon Lott is going to need to shoot a hero round to get in the mix. Yeah, and these guys are going to have to have a flat line for their round, you know. Yeah, They're just going to have to struggle and have a hard time finding a rhythm, which I just don't really see it happening today. I think all five of these guys in the mix are all pretty hungry for this big elite win towards the end of the season, leading into Worlds. You know, just momentum and yeah. confidence and all that stuff. You definitely want to have peaking right around this time, coming into a major championship. With you. Big implications for a lot of these guys, you know. Matty O's never got it done. Gannon Burr's been peaking and trying to get in the league. Anthony Barella yet to, to get one. He's been scaring it a bunch, too. No doubt. First off of the box, from Huntington Beach, California, two-time Ledstone champion, five-time world champion, Paul McMahon! Shark in the water, Philo. Little headwind. A little gusty. Shouldn't be an issue for Mr. Macbeth. Plenty of arm speed. Keep this thing on one angle. No need to turn it over, really. Very, very flat cut on this. Plenty of overstable ledge to fight. Job done off the tee. Absolutely. Next up, 
from Venice, Florida, Randa Lotta. Clapping. That looked like it just barely had enough Ian. Exactly. Enough. And from Worcester, Massachusetts, Kyle Moriarty. Kyle Wadsworth Moriarty takes the tee. Worcester's finest. Spotter's not turning around, Philo. There he goes. Oh, Ooh, a little yeah. too late. Yeah, too much air in the left flight. The headwind. Kyle Klein! And if you remember last year, Kyle Klein was actually leading the event when it got canceled. I believe he started 4 for 4 or 5 for 5. He's going to need another one of those performances here today. To he will. Get himself into that podium finish. Currently seven behind Waisaki. That's got a nice look to it, Ian. It really does. Oh, it got a bit of wind. Yeah, look good. Interesting. Mm. Thought that had every bit of it. And they are making their long walk around. Probably the longest in-hole walk on the course. Well, it's not the longest. They're going to get one from the drop zone, so they'll get about a quarter of the uh, way. That is right. Get a second to catch their composure and get ready to throw their seconds. 13 is a pretty long walk, too, from that tee yes, shot. Yes, it is. Good 900 feet. Mm -hmm. Brian Earhart, he is on the ground with Hayden Henry. On you, Brian. I am joined here just off the tee on hole one with Hayden Henry from the PDGA. Hayden, fireworks this morning at Northwoods Black. Incredible start to Championship Sunday, and I think you said it best, Missy, what, what a championship effort. Um, it got tight, as it, did, as it does at Northwood Black, and she never blinked, and she's an Elite Series champion once again. Just so much parity, like you, like you hinted on. Uh, you know, Paige won this event by double digits last year, and then now it was down to six, and we've seen that week in and week out, how close that and competitive the FPO division is getting. So, incredible to see. Well, we're going to jump over here. We have the MPO lead card, final round action at Lake Eureka, which always produces a lot of drama out here. Wind has absolutely picked up. Looks like the weather forecast didn't pick that up, huh? I don't think so. Uh, it's whipping again, probably a little more so than the other day. Um, the sun is shining. And, uh, and speaking of parity, you know, Ricky Wysocki has a chance to become the first player to win three events on the Elite Series this year. So tons of winners, and today it can come from anywhere. We just saw Paul McBeth tee off to lead the chase card. So um, just another incredible day here at Ledgestone. Well, before I throw it back to the booth, any other notes from the PDGA this week? Just rocking and rolling. E events every week from C-tiers all the way through majors. Um, Pro Worlds in two weeks. Buy a spectator pass. Go volunteer, 2022proworlds.com. You heard him, folks. Throwing it back to you in the booth. Thank you, Brian and Hayden. Here are your storylines for that final round. Ricky looking for the three-peat. Burr and Brell looking for their first Elite Series. And da -da, da -da. Paul McBeth lurking on that chase card. See if he goes McBeast mode on this finishing Sunday. And 10 Gs, Philo. Money, 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 money. <laughs>
money. They're trying to get paid this weekend, boy. That's a nice one. I wish you started out like that one. We might have to pay. That was so career. nice. We Whoa. might have to pay royalties, man. Goodness you know, gracious. you got to do a little worse job so we don't get dinged. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. It kind of runs in the family, man. <laughs> Can't help it. Just too talented. Hard to keep you down. Why is Saki warming up? Bucket Rick. Always dangerous. Oh. Wicked chain out there. Mm. Get those out of the system now, huh? <laughs> Good call. Looking for his third straight ledge stone. Looking at one's fairway now. Kyle Klein barely safe off the tee. Looks like Cynthia Ricciotti on the bag for Kyle after her around this morning. Actually, I think she might have missed the cut even. Right to left, slash head. Seems to be the, the standard here on hole one. Give it a little bit of respect. One of the trickier wins for the tee shot. Uh -oh. That'll be all right. Onto the rocks. Yeah, it should be OK. Let's see if we have a U-Disc update. Not quite yet. Putting for birdie, circle one for Klein. Looking down at Paul Macbeth, attacking the green. Waving that one up the hill. Goes up a hair short, but inside circle one for Macbeth. Mm -hmm. That's the preferred putting angle, <laughs> I think. Kind yeah, of, I you guess. You got a little bit uh, of a backstop with the bushes right. there. You know, it's uh -huh. not like you're putting straight out the water. Yeah, if you go long. If you go long, yeah. Have that comeback. Death putt looking at the abyss out there. <laughs> yeah. Paul and Wads walking up to Kyle's fourth now. Yes, it is. Looks like we'll have Randon next, though. Oh. There's what they're playing for today, that and $10,000. You know. There's the check. That's what they're really playing for. <laughs> Lata. Just barely safe off the tee. As a consequence, very close to the pin. Forehand. <laughs> Thoughts, my man? I'm going to let the man play his shot. All right. Keep my mouth shut. All right. That's usually my that. foot ends up in my mouth when I say <laughs> something about a guy's shot selection, but he dials in a nice one, runs it a hair long, but that's good. It is. 25-footer for, for Birdie. We're learning in here, aren't we? Yeah, uh, just got to let these guys do what they're doing, man. The world's best. Showing us why. Moriarty throwing four. Gives that a healthy bid. That's going to head down the backside as well. That could be interesting. They've got him in circle one. Klein walks to his birdie look, and well, we learned day one here if I love about I was about rocks. to say it, man. Yeah, you guys got to pay attention to the rules, and if you're up on those rocks, you do get a meter's relief from that. So we did see a couple of guys do a little extra work, maybe more than they needed to. It was Waisaki. Waisaki, yeah. Yeah. Made the putt, thankfully. He did. Kyle Klein looks to have a free swing, a little bit of headwind. Oh, in and out twice. Yeah. 
wonder if he was on the rocks down there. Hard to tell from yeah. that angle. Just kind of got pushed out by the wind in the end, maybe. Yeah. Oh, sure. The headwind, yeah. Macbeth for birdie. No stress there for Macbeth. That's the way to get things started. You're trying to chase down the lead card. Opening hole, birdie, make a statement. This is Kyle to save five. Udisk is one stroke behind right now on Kyle for some reason. He does salvage the bogey start his day after the OBT shot. Those are nervy putts to get things started. Oh, yeah. You could easily slide away, turn into a double or triple. Mm -hmm. Randon, let's get the 14. Brandon takes an extra moment to get settled. Maybe a little early nerves here playing on a chase card. I, Elite Series event. Got Macbeth. Yeah, a lot of uh, cameras. A lot, of, a lot of eyeballs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky Waisaki. You'll see him teeing off on the other side of this break. But during the break, we'll have the St. Jude presentation in the picture in picture. I will be back in just a few. Hundreds of disc golfers flock to the greater Peoria, Illinois area to compete in the sport's richest and most charitable event, the Ledgestone Open. But what does Ledgestone look like for the rest of the year? On the surface, Ledgestone is one of disc golf's leading retailers. But look a little closer and you'll find a group of motivated individuals providing the best possible service to the disc golf community. So whether you're building a bag, wanting to support your favorite pro, or looking to add to your disc golf wardrobe, choose the retailer that's as passionate about the sport as you are. Choose Ledgestone. They say like, you're the greatest of all time, but in my mind, that is not true. There are two other women that I'm tied with. Until I get that six world title, that is still up for debate. So this is so important to me to cement my name in disc golf history as the most winning woman to ever play the game. recommend the Envy to every single person that plays this golf. This is such a good throwing putter. If you don't have an Envy in your bag, I don't know what you're doing. The Envy is one of the most pure, straight flying putters. Comes out clean, can handle power, it can handle touch. It's just very versatile. It holds any line that you're really putting it on. It's so good. So good! It's so good.
It was important for me to partner with a retailer that could help with growing my brand and making my products available all over the country and across the world. Flight Factory has helped me accomplish that. Check out all of my gear and thousands of other discs at Flight Factory. Welcome back. Final group about to take the T of one. The kayakers are out in force, Philo. It's like a Giants game. <laughs> I like it. Yep. On behalf of the I Disc Golf Pro Tour and the Did Ledgestone yeah, Group, we would like to welcome you to the 2022 Discraft Ledgestone Open, presented by Bushnell. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your lead card. Scheduled to tee off at 3.20. First off of the box, from Scottsdale, Arizona, two-time Ledgestone champion, the defending co-champion, and two-time world champion, Ricky Wysocki! Rick going to enforce her off the tee. That's a good swing right there from Rick. Very narrow cut swing. The wind gobbled that up, Ian. He was hundreds of feet past the sperm day one. They, we got the tee uh, box, Edwin Cook out here. One stroke off the tee. This is not the wind you want to see on hold. <laughs> it seems to be the same wind every year. Destroyer off one's tee. Aggressive line from AB. Does get the nose to bend over to the right. Oh, wow. this is a monster. <laughs> a full flight from AB. Just got to there. I, I have a feeling he's in like the 150 foot range. Yeah, I think it's further than it. Oh, looks. further up than it looks. Okay. Further towards the basket than it looks. Well, finally we got our push number two out there. Finally. 185 for Barella left. Monster drive. Burr takes the tee. Very able to crest the hill nicely. That's going to be a great position to shoot up towards the target. Really well done. And that's 17 under. Yeah, just 145 left for Burr. Man Orem next. This could be trouble if it doesn't get stable. It's fighting it. It's got a chance. Those land safe just in time for Matteo. Actually had a bit of room out there. You see the white stripe out there where the asphalt meets the gravel is actually the line. Barella, an absolute yeet off the tee on one. If you want to grab a yeet of your own, head over to hooligandisc.com. They even have a signature juice series edition yeet for sale right now. And I do have confirmation the Yeet is on 
its way to my house. <laughs> That's not a line you see most people take on hole one that Anthony Barilla threw. No. That was way out towards the left, very aggressive towards the target. That man knows his destroyers. Yes, he does. Most guys are going to swing it on the right side of the spotter, and he was well left of the spotter when that thing took off. Mm -hmm. And they are making a long walk down around the lake, ahead on two, like Beth. Saw the drive in the picture and picture. Not the best, but not the worst, and that's not helping either. That's edge of circle two if it's not the fairway. Kyle Klein had a monster forehand drive. He's just going tactic here for the approach. Just an overstable approach disc. Ooh, we let that out early. Oh, look at that thing drifting in. It did get a little dance. Oh, that helps too. Yeah, that. All right. Okay. Thought he'd challenge the water a little more, but it all works out in the end for Kyle Klein. First Elite Series win. He's been in position uh, so many times. He's been in the mix a bunch. Yeah, he's at, he's at the lead at a ton of Elite Series events. Just has not quite figured out how to close it down. What's it What's it like that? Just trying to get your first one, man. Just believing in yourself it's, it's enough? It's a or? ridiculous monkey to try to get off your back, man. It's, it's pretty stressful, you know. If you know you have the abilities, you have the skills. You know, you've got all the components. It's just, when is it going to be your time, you know? When are you going to put all the pieces together? Mm -hmm. It's tough. Over Very tough. Back to two we go for Macbeth throwing three. Take a soft bit at this. A lot of turnover, I imagine. Yep. Nice layup for par from Paul. One for two start, it looks like. Looking at, at your kayakers. You can watch, like, a ton of the action. Maybe you only miss, like, five, six holes, something like that. Maybe a couple more. Yeah, you're going to miss, you know. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight, nine, eight. ten. You probably won't catch them until you see them back at 13 when they cross the water yeah, on the par yeah. five. Yep. So. Unless you pull your kayak out and drag it over to the stream or something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they had to buy a spectator pass, Philo? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Maybe not. The loophole, the kayak loophole. Oh. Hi, guys. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, they say two could play at that game. Orem, 250 going up the hill. Matteo dribbles that inside circle one. Can really see the tailwind wants to drop that disc down as it starts to get there when you just throw it level to the ground you got to go just a hair higher but not too much that's the trick of that approach shot when you're down below Rick probably looking down at Anthony Barella for his second shot Let's see it looks like Rick's gonna go Just 160 left for Ricky Waisaki. For a wide open 160 foot shot, it's a pretty tough one. Yeah, there's some things happening here. Obviously, the basket's on a spine. Don't want to miss left. Don't want to tug it and give it too much respect out on the wide side, and that's a well done shot there from Rick. And now we swing over to Barella. This angle is a lot easier to kind of anticipate what's going to happen than where Rick was at. Play 
for Anthony Barella. Very nicely into circle one. Burr next up. Before that, a birdie look for Kyle. He capitalizes on that great tee shot. Yes, sir. Nice bounce back. Kind of let one slip through his fingers on hole one. Got to get things going early out here. Yep. Macbeth to clean up four. Back to Burr. 140 in. There's that jump putt range, Philo. Great, great utility shot to have in the bag. Keeps things under control. Uphill from 140. Yeah, man. It's, you know, like when you do like a kind of a stand, sideways stance, and you're like doing like a slower, normal throw, it's kind okay. of easy for those to get away from you sometimes. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. So like a full-on jump putt, commit to it. It's a controlled speed thing, you know? Uh -huh. like I like that decision. I, I like this idea. Mm -hmm. If you have it. Yeah, sure. Not everybody does. It's, you know, it's a skill. Something you got to practice. Orem for birdie. That man, incredible with a putter. Incredible all-around game, Matteo. True. Got a good arsenal of shots to choose from, a little bit of everything. Great scramble game. That is so true. Barella, a birdie make. Looks nice with a birdie as well. As does Bird. <laughs> Macbeth on three, excuse me. Oh, oh nasty kick. kick. Long ways from the basket. Mm, he's going to have a long putt now to save par. Here is our new disc powered course close up. I have some Eureka Lake Temp course. Been around for a minute. It's been a fun track to come out and compete on. Got a, a huge revision kind of after that first year. Nate really took a lot of the player feedback. and Yeah, they did. We got we kind of got to where we are right now, which is a yeah, really think sweet about spot. The, yeah, for sure. I was thinking about, like, for a prime example, the tower hole, the one or Ezra Ader hole. Days. Back in the day, we used to have this really wonky kind of tee pad that was on the, the road there, oh, like right. the sidewalk tee pad, and it was super steep, very slick. Yeah. And that was a great addition to the course for them to add that, you know, Flat tee pad. Temporary flat tee pad and gives the guys an opportunity to get full speed, not, you know, twist their body up trying to it's just it's awesome changes like that. And here's Rick. Did he do it on purpose? No, I think he was just trying to help him <laughs> out and uh Gannon Burr just wasn't quite ready for the reception. <laughs> Incomplete pass. Yeah. <laughs> well, that might have been a a fumble if he was going backwards, right? Oh, I, oh, oh that's a good call. That's a good call. I didn't see any red, no red flags thrown, thankfully. Waisaki. Rick throwing the rive. That's yeah, pretty Rick. tasty. I think he hit it perfectly. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Not Kyle Klein good, but very good. That's solid. You make it around the corner, got a straight approach into the green, you're loving life. Barella. Looks like the luster firebird. Mm -mm. Look at that skinny flick shot from A.B. Ooh. Plenty of skip on the finish down below. Nice angle to throw in for the hyzer. Really nicely done. Kyle Klein with a long birdie look on three. This has got to be fairway, Philo. Yeah, absolutely. Beyond all circles for Kyle Klein. Yep, never really gave that one a chance, but a solid par. Make a mistake off the tee. That's what you got to do out here. Recover. Mm -hmm. Burr, back on two. That might be leaking a little early. It looks like it. That 
area is out of bounds. They just jumped out of. Yep. And checking U disk, we do have an OB confirmation for Burr. We'll have to struggle for par from there. Orem grabs a rive. Matteo also hugging that OB line. Not sure if Deuce. that jump back out safe. Uh, they might be giving him a thumbs up. Ryan, did you happen to see that Orem yeah. disc finish? Yeah, that's unfortunately out of bounds. He got caught up in some trees, and he's about uh, two feet out of bounds from there. <laughs> oh, rough break. Macbeth to save par on three. Got it started on the right angle, but doesn't hold long enough. That's going to net bogey back to even par. You cannot have that if you're trying to make a come from behind win for Macbeth. That's a nurse shark play, not a great white shark play, Philo. Yes, sir. Well, you got a terrible kick. Did kind of have that shot bleeding in towards the tree line off the tee. Just yeah. not centered up enough, and that's the trick of this hole. You got to throw it in the middle. One of the few classic kind of a wood tee shots out here. Everything else seems pretty wide open off the tee. Yeah, seven, maybe the other woods hole yeah, on the course. Yeah, maybe nine with the bridge, you know, or mm -hmm. whichever. I think that's nine, eight or nine. Yeah, it's nine. Nine, right? So... Mm -hmm. Not too many tee shots force you into a tunnel. Your final group and flotilla watching the action. Couple OB drives for Burr and Orem. Just shy of the corner as well, so that definitely adds some complexity to this shot. I've got our Bushnell range right at 350 for Matt. Big mm, ask, Phyla, with this tough, green man. in this fairway. You can never count this man out, though. No, nope, he's really good at being, you know, a timely player, clutching up when he needs to. Orem to the circle and on the good side of the tree. Are you serious? Wow. Incredible well, stuff. That's why we don't count him out. He's hey, a gamer. Stroll tied. Stroll tied, baby. <laughs> Let's take another look at this. Matty, oh, unique play. This Dude. man scrambles his own way. Did you see where he threw that? Through the gazebo. That was nasty. Yeah. And huge thanks to our friends at Sunstein for sponsoring the signature moment of the day. Patent, trademark, copyright, NFT needs. They've got you. Sunsteinlaw.com. Huge supporters of disc golf. Love to support them as well. Back to Orem. Or sorry, Burr. 330 for Gannon. Better angle. Ooh, this could be headed towards the water. Uh, she down. Be out in the circle too as well. Just didn't have enough turn on that. Kyle Klein on the T of four. I like Ooh. that line. It's got a drop. Here we go. Well, it's not too deep in there. There are out alleys out on that green. There are. He's probably right around a pace or two outside of circle one from mm -hmm. the looks of things. Death putt coming up for Kyle Klein. They have Gannon on the fairway. Interesting. I thought I saw some water. I, I thought so, too. Saki slammer into the green with his second after that great drive. Yeah, that'll play Ooh. right there. Rick putting pressure on early. That's a smart play right there. Ricky Wysocki doesn't even bring the water into play. Pin high, 20-footer. Brian, did you happen to get eyes on that, that burr? Third throw after the OB drive? I'm actually about to run up to it now. Uh, AB's lining up his shot. I'll let you know as soon as I find out. Thanks, sir. Brella into the green from 220. It's underturned. Oh, no. Did that kick OB? That had to have kicked OB. That had so much speed on it on the redirect. All right, Brian, update us on your findings. 
Yeah, I'm looking. AB's looks like it's kicked out of bounds. I also don't see Gannon's yet. I'm still looking though. I'll, I'll let you guys know. It really looked like it got over the edge. It's got to be between the edge and the water if it's safe. It looked like it kind of creeped under the limbs from what I saw. That thing had some heat on it. Just the, not the ideal angle coming in. Yeah, Tia 4 with Macbeth going Luna. Keeping the putter high. Too oh, high, though. No. Just straight up with me. Hopefully kayak crew is retrieving a Brella's disc for him. He's going to try to fish it out for him. I don't know if you can see you know it. That water's so mucky. Is it really? On the edges, yeah. It's, it's pretty tough to see. This fits right there. Brian, while we watch this Barella approach with his fourth, you have news on Burr. Burr is safe. He is not in the water right now. He's just on the edge, just off the side of the bank. There's a break. Huge break for Gannon Burr. I thought that was gone for sure. Macbeth throwing two on four. This is a hard approach right here, Ian. Long downhill, bunch of trees in the way. Oh. Circle two to save par oh, now. Man. Well, if anyone can make those, it's Macbeth. Burr. What a break. <laughs> Not a lot of room for error there. That cabbage saved him, man. If it that did. stuff was any shorter, that probably would have been gone. So he's grabbing his meter in from water's edge. And we'll have this left to save par. What a save. Huge par save. Massive. That should keep him within two of the lead. One back currently, but Waisaki very close for birdie. Here's Orem to save his four. Philo, how about those par saves, man? I was about to say it, man. Those are two absolutely fantastic par saves. Scrambles both out of bounds, working man par. Big putt from Gannon Burr and a well-thrown approach from Matty O. Isaki, a stroke on the card plus. That's Barella. That's bogey, isn't it? That should be bogey for Barella. Yeah. Replay of this Burr make. You can putt like this. I suggest you do. This is on a frozen rope out the hand. You can see that finger pop he was talking about mm -hmm. in his interview yesterday. Solid. So, love that. Over to Macbeth to save par on four. That saves par. We will take a quick break on the network. Back to the action in just a few. We are dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future 
to make that happen. Klein on hole four with a birdie look. Cash money. Not on Klein knocking it down from circle two in the bush. Not the crazy start he had last year, but still a very nice start. Over to three, Waisaki. Rick going harp off the tee. Flexing it over. Oh, no, that's not what you want to see, but a fantastic second bounce off the tree, knocks him down safe. And still got a putt for birdie. Burr. Silky smooth. Runs it a hair long, back edge of the circle, but Fantastic throw from Gannon Burr. Yeah, just the meat of the gap there. Man, that was about a meter off the chains, maybe less. Orem next. Oh. Matteo following a similar line a little lower. <laughs> Dumps out, circle two putt. See if Barella can find the Goldilocks shot between those two. That's his AVR three. Look at this shot, Ian. That's Goldilocks. There you go. Perfectly done. Just right. Yep. <laughs> exactly. This one's too hot, that second one was too cold, but that third one, mm -mm. just right. AB, a little hyzer stand up with the A3. Boom. Thanks, Azuka, for rolling that replay back. Klein, T of five. Seating the hole for par. Wants no part of this one. Just going to chuck it out and around the corner. And that should be safe. Oh, Kyle Klein misses the layup. Really? Wow. That's something you cannot let happen out here, man. you got to land safe on that tee shot if you're laying up. And he was even aiming for, like, the meatiest part of the fairway. Yeah, that it was... did look a hair right out the gate. I didn't want to say it. I figured he'd throw something... Plenty overstable to ensure it makes that safe. Mm -hmm. mm, big mistake. Waisaki, a lengthy birdie bid. 50 feet. Oh. oh, everything but in for Ricky Waisaki. Beautiful flight. Just runs out of speed. Orem, right on that 50 foot mark as well. Just off the mark for Matteo. A little bit more turn, and that goes home. Burr should be next with the birdie looks. He is just inside circle one. This will get Gannon back within one of Waisaki. Good with the putter. That he is. Watching him in Vegas, that was some of the nuttiest putting I've seen. 
definitely put it on the petting clinic. Yeah, I was like, okay, he's there. like this. <laughs> Seemed like he couldn't miss. He was uh, dropping in from like 80 feet. Yeah, lots of putts. On crazy, like, flex lines. Mm -hmm. Orem saves par as will the rest of the gang. Except for Barella. Had that birdie. Check out this Gannon Burr putt. Swing and pop, keeping the disc centered up with his body. He's Arm. been playing great all year long. Yeah, I was just thinking about this round on the end of the course, actually. There's a putt, I think, on hole eight or hole nine. Yes, after that's they cross exactly over, the, over the water, the, the tee shot, uh -huh. and it kind of slides way off to the right. Jonesboro, yeah, this was a great putt as well. Off into the woods on 15. Great birdie to get up on 18. So hard to make birdie on 18 to even have a putt for birdie on 18. Yeah. And sliding them in. Obviously taking it down at the Masters Cup. Used to be an NT. Used to be, unfortunately, did slide down a tier. Silver Series. The man had it moving. I mean, the field was there. They were. You know? No, that still feels like an Elite Series. You know, it's a classic on tour. I don't think it's ever going to go away. It shouldn't go away. It's a very unique place to play disc golf. Agreed, sir. There's so much history, too, at Santa Cruz, you know? Yeah. Just can't lose that one. Burr on the box of four, going putter. Did it catch something late? It did. It kind of caught a little something, knocked it down. It's going to have an awkward putt. More yeah. than likely just a layup. This is an aggressive line oh, for yeah. Macbeth. He's pointed straight at the target. He's gone full Ricky Bobby mode. And he's going to need to do something special from here on out with this start. Right. He's got it on a nice line. Let's see if it hooks fast enough. Oh, oh, so circles edge with Beth to birdie. All right. Barella back on four. Going inside line. I don't think that's going to stand up fast enough. Up oh, there it is. Pops tree. Friendly be... kick out into the fairway. It is. Up and down, no problem for Yeah, there. exactly. Over to the drop zone for Kyle Klein's third. Oh no, that's not the swing you're looking for. He's going to be throwing another one. Maybe. Oh, Ooh, just does creep in. He gave up on it just like we did, but it Ooh. somehow found a way. Long putt for Bogey. Waisaki. T of four. Centered up on that one, unfortunately. Good bounce to knock it straight down. Should be able to get up and down for par. Orem, three off the lead. That's the kick you don't want right there. Yes. Brian, did you see how far that might have gone into the woods there for Matt? I didn't get exactly where it landed, but yeah, it's not going to be a great spot, especially higher on the hill. There's not as many openings up there. Yeah, very true. Less beat in to Klein. That wasn't a chance to save Bogey. He'll have that coming back for five now. Yep, yeah, discombobulated Kyle Klein this yeah. time. Yeah. Back over to four we go for your leader, Waisaki. Second shot into the green. This is a 205-foot approach downhill. Got to stable up in a hurry, get some ground. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, it's still just a touch it. long, yeah, yeah, but 26 feet, 27 feet. Mm -hmm. Macbeth for birdie. Just much. A little dry. Back over to four for Orem. Matt 210 into the pin, also in the rough. The mana wizard, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, at least he's back onto the fairway. Silver lining on that cloud. 
Unfortunately, this will send Matteo back to level par for his round. Still firmly in the mix. Just got to pick it up from here. No more mistakes. Or I'm now 160 from the pin. Touching disc golf right there, Matteo. And that is a touchy shot down that hill. Absolutely. There are a lot of roots you can see there that could really wreck your approach if you come up right on circle's edge. So you got to chuck it in there just a little bit past circle's edge and then have enough turnover on the disc to really grab. Comes in with some hyzer. It can pick up some extra feet. Varela from the fairway. Kind of like that, but that's Kinda. not bad. Yeah, came in with a bit too much angle, you know. I, I like the idea, but just a hair flatter would have done better. And Burr wanted no part of that look from 75 feet. Smartly laid up. Yeah, not much you can do on this hole. Yeah. Macbeth was about at the range. That's probably about the cap for most guys, about 38, 40 feet. It's probably about the distance where you feel like, all right, I'm sure I can hit solid on the basket from here. Start getting around 50, 60, 70 feet downhill, a whole bunch of land behind you. <laughs> Got to let that one go. Rick coming back up the hill for par. Yeah. Yeah. Maintain his one stroke edge over Burr. Burr will have to stay two back. Heavy chain out left side for Barella. Oh. Another drop stroked on the roller coaster here. Burr for par. And he stays one behind Waisaki. Barella, the unforced bogey. Orem, a bogey as well. There are your scores a break while they make their way to five. Back in just a few. your game make gotta go gotta throw your disc golf warehouse with a huge selection of discs bags baskets carts shirts and more gotta go gotta throw.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level shop online or our golden valley minnesota store free shipping with all online orders over 75 dollars online or in store get what you need for the game you love gotta go gotta throw.com your disc golf warehouse in the game since 1993 Here is Philo's Philosophy brought to you by BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Yes, sir. Today, I believe strokes green or strokes gained on the putting green is really going to pay off. I think you're going to get yourself a lot of these kind of circles edge looks for birdie on a lot of these holes if you aren't as sharp as you'd like to be. So you got to get those. A lot of these drives, you really want to kind of ride the OB lines and fade safe. That's kind of the safest way to play it. You, there's a lot of space out there on some of these OB lines, so use it to your advantage and take advantage of the par threes. That's where a lot of the scoring that really sets you apart from the field is gonna happen. The par fours are all pretty fair and pretty gettable, but if you get loose on the par threes, you're losing strokes to the field. Very quickly. Burr takes a tee of five.
are having a tough time getting comfortable. Maybe a little bit of a wind check. Oh, I, I would think so. Brian, what are you feeling out there on the fairway? It's very windy. Uh, it's blowing pretty hard head cross to the right right now, which is really a terrible result. Dan throwing a beaut. Thank you, Brian. Don't typically see a lot of guys throwing a cut swing off of this tee with that headwind yeah, blowing. Uh -huh. That could really hold you up, stall you out, and kind of push you to the right. Waisaki going felon over Stable Fairway. That's usually the reaction you're looking for, something just like that. A bunch of hyzer, just get it over the fence. A little chip shot up to the basket and be done with it. Yep. Barella next. He's so young, but it feels like he's been in the game forever, Philo. He has been around for a long time. You know, he was under Macbeth's tutelage early on in his career. Great mentor to have. <laughs> to put it mildly. Oh, geez, dropping a dime inside circle one. Nothing <laughs> out of the Back on track, knock that birdie putt in. And Orem. Very safe play from Orem. Is it? Yeah, it's fine. Getting some claps there. Long way from the pin, though. It is. That's that's the. The very, very safe and <laughs> conservative way to play this hole. Mm -hmm. Have a longer approach, but plenty of room to work with. Nothing conservative here from A.B. An absolute yeet over the baseball field. Almost lost the cap. He yeeted that thing so hard. <laughs> you can head over to hooligandisc.com and grab a yeet of your own. They've got a signature Drew Gibson edition on there for sale right now. Tour director Jeff Spring walking with the final grouping. A little bit of early separation for Burr and Waisaki. Just a hair, getting a little help from Anthony Barella, kind of beating himself a little bit on a couple of holes. And AB's got plenty of game to recover. Obviously, that drive, the best of the group, gives him an opportunity to gain some strokes on folks. Close the gap again, stay in the battle. Don't want to slack off too much. Can't really have any more mistakes from here on. Macbeth on the tee of six. Just a layup shot off the tee. The meat of that hole is in the second shot. Yes, it is. She's definitely got to make up some ground off the tee. It's 515 to the corner, I believe, and you definitely want to get at least four and a quarter, 450. If you're going to attack for two. Yeah. Orem, 235 to the pin. Adio, just a meter off the OB line. So give it a nice little three quarter swing, yeah. comfortable swing. Stable, something you can anticipate. Well done there for Matty O. Up and down for par. Waisaki. Rick 200 into the green. Grabbing a slammer. No problem for Rick. Plan executed for Waisaki. Didn't feel like he needed to go for it. Played the hole about as well as you could. Macbeth, big second shot into six is green. Takes a lot of courage to go for this green. This is upper fours distance? Absolutely, probably in the 470, 480 range. Long OB carry for Macbeth, kind of hang it out over there. That is hooking real fast and that left side is Typically not very sticky. There it goes. There's a chance he's in bounds, but likely OB 
I see if we get an update. I think that had a chance to stay in. That had yeah. some energy on it as it worked its way towards the line. Gannon Burr. Yep. Long layup. Yep. And we do have a UDIS confirmation there. Paul putting for par. Circle two now on six. Definitely makes it harder when you got to make the hero putt every hole. Barella for a stroke on the card. Yeah, this is a look you love to have on this hole. Looks like a right to left wind for this putt. It tends to swirl out here, so it could change any second. Half these flags are going in different directions. It dribbles out. That would have been a nice momentum boost for his game after kind of a you know the best up and down start he's had. Orem saving three. As will the card, it looks like. Really would love to see A B put one together. Feel you know, like better part of the last eight or ten years. I've seen a lot of Anthony Barilla, I've seen him blossom and come into his own. Just that last little hump. Yeah, he's last little go hump. Yeah. Yep. Kyle Klein second on six. Kyle hangs it out. The disc stands up. This is going to need a lot of help to get back in. Oh, look at that. How about that? A break on the network back in just a few. My name is Garrett Gerthy. People may know me as Double G, and I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. When I have Double G's Craft Jerky and I pull it out of my bag during a round, the first thing anyone asks is, is that Double G's Craft Jerky? And I always bring the big bag because I know I'm gonna have to share it. I'm a big fan of beef jerky, and I have to say that Double G beef jerky is absolutely my favorite I've ever found. I'm always looking forward to digging my hand in my next bag of Double G Craft Jerky. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. What do I love about disc golf? Same thing we all love. Sound of the chains. I love that you can play on a course or make up your own. My favorite thing about disc golf is challenging myself every time I step onto a course. What do I love disc golf? It gives me the chance to connect with an incredible community and throw some pretty amazing discs. Because after all, big is love, big is life. I love disc golf because you can be as creative as you want with this sport. Please don't let me in my zone. Uh, let me in my zone. Let me let me in my zone. Uh, let me in my zone. Please don't let me in my zone. Please don't let me in my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation. You can conversate to that tone. Uh, I got up on that throne, yeah. So I'm never alone, yeah. Balling can't beat me up because I'm back in my zone now. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too.
An important part of getting a PDJ membership is helping grow the game. Membership dollars are used to bolster competition of all levels, from local C tiers to majors. Tools like Digital Scorecard and Tournament Manager help events run seamlessly. Your PDJ membership also gives you access to Disc Golf Network coverage for select events and a 50% discount to their full coverage package. Help grow the sport and get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join. We are here at Idlewild Disc Golf Course in Burlington, Kentucky for the Uplay Community Clinic. Just being out at the clinics, at the course, really getting to engage with the fans that love disc golf, that are here to watch the pros, seeing how excited some of these people get to be taught, you know, by James Conrad and Paige. Every kid showed up to our clinic, received a free disc and a mini. Like, these kids want to play tournaments. They want to be the next Paige Pierce, Paul Macbeth. The future is so bright for disc golf. We saw the picture in picture Brewer Drive. Here's Waisaki with an enforcer. <laughs> Smart play there from Rick. High, wide, push it out over the OB line. Let the disc drag itself back in. Barella next. out in the fairway safely. Orem next up. Philo, you're Rick's caddy. You telling him to run the green or play this for par? Uh, I would say it's... It really depends on how Rick's been playing this whole, like, in practice and how he feels about it in the moment. He's got to be the one to decide. The caddy doesn't tell you what to do. I know. Just but saying. If I were playing along with Rick and he's feeling it and you give him the confidence, you encourage him tell him the spot to aim for that's about it all right or i'm out in the fairway safely as well presnell lighten it up in a sixth place he's up nine spots on the day plenty of birdies to be made out here at eureka lake lots of birdies to be made throw some clean shots make a couple of putts you can walk out of here eight nine under no problem Keep them safe. Hole seven here with Paul Macbeth. It's a must make birdie at this point for Macbeth. Gonna have to play extremely clean the whole way home. Oh, shooting the gap. Yeah, got through the late trees inside oh. circle one, pin high. Final group walking to their second shots. We've got our Bushnell ranges here, Philo. What you got? What's Rick's I got number? 500 on the nose. I tell Rick. Rick to lay that up. Okay. At 500, and this, you know. Actually, he's throwing first as well. Yeah, then you tell him to lay it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's doing that. Yeah. Yep. Your first act. It's a chess match, especially on a hole like this. Gannon goes first, he throws OB. Then it's, you know, how do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all 500 feet, plus or minus 20 here. It's definitely gaining strokes on, on the field. You make birdie here, so I imagine they're all thinking about it. Gannon burrs up first, so we'll see how he executes, and I imagine that'll have a lot of implications on what the next guys are going to do. Big, wide, high layup here from Gannon, trying to spike it back in the fairway. Just does creep across the OB boundary. Almost got string denied right it there. Certainly <laughs> did. That was a risky play. Pays off. Waisaki next. He's going to throw that forehand layup, it looks like. He hung that out there about 70, 80 feet wide of safe land. and. Just barely. If that grass was any thicker, that might not have done it. Woo. Seen some stick in that grass out there off the fairway. They do. Sometimes they just tombstone right in there. Looks like Rick's going to keep it safe with the forehand. Smart golf. Yep. Might get penalized this stroke, but it won't be distance as well. No, 
That's a well thought out shot there from Rick. Push the OB line, know the disc wants to fade through it to the widest part of the fairway. Very smart. Orem. That's typically the shape of the shot you would see from about that range. Nice and level, over stable. These are some nice second shots. Just play it smart. Anthony Barella, he's got the arm. He might go for this. That looks like a halo disc, Philo. That's an aggressive swing there, Ian. <laughs> Anthony Barella, see if he could take advantage now. This is going to be two opportunities. Last two holes, super difficult to score on. Got to make these putts. Heck of a shot. He's throwing his way. Getting the job done. To looks. Yes, he is. Got to make those putts count. He's got a 28-footer for the birdie. Ahead on the course, Kyle Klein putting for birdie. Hole seven. Pushed it long right off the tee. What putt. Step through straddle for Kyle Klein. Back-to-back -back birdies. I was fired. Yes, it was. Got to do that out here in the wind. That's true. It's not a calm day. You can't really lob them up in the air today. You got to be a little more aggressive, more assertive. Brian, you got a mile per hour guess on these wind gusts we're seeing out here at Eureka Lake? I would say 15 to 20 with some getting up to about 23 to 25, but not, not too many. That's enough to make you think about things. Yeah. Enough to alter putts and everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. You know, wind bumps, wind dumps, you know, like just <laughs> pushes and shoves. Orm from a touch over 200. There you go. That's a nice touchy approach from Mario. Right in between the circle. Waisaki should be next with the approaches. Rick just inside 180. Slammer coming in. Big wide hyzer from Wysocki using the ground play. That works. That's just fine. Nestles on a bullseye whisker. And Burr last into the green, but before that, Macbeth for birdie on seven. This is definitely in that too close to miss range. No. Heavy chains, but too far on that right side. This has been happening to him all season long, Ian. Yep. Burr. 140 foot jump putt approach. There you go. He said that's his tough range yesterday, right? So he just jump putts it. I like it. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's smart. If you have it under control, it's easy for things to get squirrely with the jump putt if you don't practice it often and really feel where that disc is leaving your hand with all that energy. Barella easy to yank for a stroke on the card. That is my miss when I try a little too hard. Yank it off to the right. Yeah! Solid putting stroke from Anthony Barella. That is a good separator birdie for A.B. True story, man. You don't really see a whole lot of birdies out here on hole six. That was the ninth of the, of the day. Well, there's only, what, 60-some-odd guys playing today, so. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh -huh. Orem to save the four. Finding chains nicely. Burr for his version. Can you imagine on a Sunday round when there's already cut, you know you're in the cash. There might be a few more guys playing a bit more aggressively at this hole, knowing you know, it's really not much to lose, right? Sure. Why not take a stab at it? Rolling back a Zuka replay of the rare birdie on six. Back back. Yeah. But his AB is just two back of Waisaki. So we mando it. Plenty of time for Anthony Barella. Plenty of holes left. Only a third of the way through. Still just a couple of sticks off. 
A lot of stroke swinging holes on this track. This Klein. Is one of them. Yeah, they very true. Uh oh. Oh yeah, you can't let ooh. He will be headed to the drop zone. Hmm. Try to scramble up a bogey. Barella. T of seven. Got to ride that momentum you just earned. That's not going to do it. Just worm too burner. low. That was a total worm burner. Yep. Gannon busting out the A2. Pretty overstable, isn't it? Very overstable. Expect to see him push this towards the left edge of the fairway, trying to miss those late trees. Little ground play. That'll putt for Gannon Burr. That's inside the circle. Those trees are just about right at bullseye. Maybe one half pace off of them. Mm -hmm. Saki Bomb Slammer com coming from the man himself on our VII Danvir apparel hole. Rick able to dodge those defining trees on the left side over there next to Gannon Burr. Yeah, you called it. We just got those bush nailed at 30 feet just inside circle one. Orem next. Popular spot. Certainly is hard to keep that straight finish the whole way, even on such a short hole. Definitely got to incorporate a little bit of a left to right in the action. Like that uh, Chandler Fry ace we saw earlier yeah, this that week. Was Wasn't that? That was butter. Macbeth on the T of eight. And that's Macbeth trouble. Is yanked it. Going to need oh. some good luck to fight through. Two in a row for Macbeth. That was on the edge of that tree line. Oof. And that's a great drive. That's perfect. Yeah, perfect. Set up beautifully. Look that. at that gallery. We're getting, it's getting thick. It is, couple deep on the fairway of seven. Looking down at Barella, 115 feet from the pin. Live look from the drone cam, and there he is in circle one to save par. That's pretty cool. Anthony Barella not helping himself there. Oh. Late kick off the tree. Going to give him a tester for par. Is he? He is in circle one at least. It's a tester, though. It's oh, oh, yeah. Towards circle's edge. It looks like. Is he out? No, he just marked his disc. Oh, maybe it didn't turn out so bad after all for Anthony Barella. Yeah. Looked worse than it was. Orem for two. Doing Nick Saban proud with that make. Barella to save his three. He got on six. Looks like he might drop back here on seven if Rick can slide in the two. Ricky Wysocki off the cage. Burr for a share of the lead. Where is his disc exactly? It looks like he's wedged right in between those two trees. Probably smarter not to mark it at this point. Oh, yeah. Haven't seen that before. Do I have to, though? I mean, if I mark it, then I can mark it behind it. But if I do that and then get my foot behind that, is that good? Yeah, that's 
So an awkward putt, but pretty short for Gannon. This is one of those crutch putts you watched from Gannon back in the day, Philo? Something like that. He was hobbling up more vertical than <laughs> spread out like that, but for sure it shouldn't be much of a stress from uh -huh. four paces away from the target just to snap it in there. It's funny how that crutch putt might have like leaked into his eventual putting form. Maybe. Well, I'm going to take another look at this Ricky Wysocki brick from 25 feet away. His hand never got into the chains. All the balance going in the wrong direction, it looks like to me. Everything's pushing out to the left. And with that nose down putt of nose his. Nose down, yeah, the hand just never got, just barely, briefly got over the rim. Just can't let that happen from that close. Look at all that nose down. That's just pitched so sharply for such a short putt. Just mental error right there from Rick. Can't let those slip through your fingers, bud. No, nope. and huge thanks to Idio Footwear for that form breakdown. You can head over to idiosports.com and grab a pair. Disc golf shoes made by disc golfers. A few moments ago, Klein from the drop zone on eight. Where are you going? That's not what you're looking for, Ian. Oh. That's a tough place to try to get up and down from. That's going to be a really dangerous turnover or forehand into that peninsula green. Well, there is a little bit of a hyzer gap out there on over the right the pond. side over the pond, but obviously the water, something you're going to have to contend with. Back on the tee of eight for Burr. What? Oh, yeah, that's totally there. If you got a big arm, that big towering spike hyzer, he got to miss that tree right on the corner, though. You don't want to push it much wider than that. It's there. Definitely takes the gap out of play. There you go. Go, 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 go. Get that guy up a little short. No, they're, they're clapping. Good. They're good. Yep. It is a bit short from the ideal landing zone. Yeah, More than likely just playing for par from there. Yeah, Brian, let me get your, your take on that play there for Burr. I think it's super wind dependent. I've talked to Gavin Rathbun and a few other players that like that line, and they say they'd like it for it to be more of a crosswind right to left, but this is kind of a tail left to right, so kind of an unfavorable wind for it. I've, I've met some players that love the line. Okay. There was Orem with a nice shot through the gap. Yeah, showing you the way that hole's intended to be played, lacing it down the middle. Barella's looking up. You got to look for this wind, as you saw with Gannon. Look like he just kind of took the bottom out of it once it got up to the apex. Mm -hmm. It'd be hard to make the, the finishing turn. Oh, this should be cool. That Halo Destroyer is out over the trees. Wow. Oh, my. Huge <laughs> spike hyzer from AD. What a shot you're getting on the Disc Golf Network live from the drone cam, Philo. That was fun. That was so cool. Waisaki, he's grabbing the Royal Rive. Perfect, 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 perfect. Best Clutch. of the bunch? Yes. Oh, wow. It, yes. That was the best of the bunch. A replay of this burr. No, or is Anthony Barella, Barella, excuse me. You know what I love about that swing? All the three lines matched up. His shoulders, his hips, and his arm, all creating Angle. the same plane on the way up and out. <laughs> They're all 370 to 305 into the green. Into the green goes Paul Macbeth, Luna in his hand. It's looking pretty tasty. Missing on the correct side as well. Got to be right there. There it is. Four or five paces off the target. He's not missing that one. Should not do. Especially not if they're missing a putt on seven. Yep, he's going to have to <laughs> really do something special now. Yep. Now five strokes off the pace. Making birdie on hole eight. It's a great birdie. That's definitely a stroke advantage on the majority of the field. Yes. It's a tough one to get. Got to throw two perfect shots or 
pretty good tee shot and a really good approach and make a long one. Mm -hmm. Out of gimme hole. A few moments ago, Paul McBeth for birdie on the green. There we go. And it gets him to 16-5 behind Wysocki and Burr. Back to even par on the day. Just eight holes in and got nothing to show for it. I saw Kyle looking down into the, the water, unfortunately. Burr, 370 left. This is a tough 372, you know? Yes. From where he's at, he's kind of pinched off. Not, I wouldn't say pinched off, but he's off to the right side of the fairway, and you got the wind kind of working against you, blowing back to your right. So you got to imagine that's going to push your disc down if you throw anything kind of neutral. Mm -hmm. Just going to kind of roll it over and push it. So this is a very stressful and high technical, you know, difficulty shot. Going mid-range. This will be his M4. Skinny line he's going to hit. Makes sense because you can't fade on this shot at all. Water on the left. Pond on the right. That is drifting hard to the right, Ian, towards the pond. Needs to hit those woods. Oh, that looks wet. Brian, do you have eyes on that disc for Burr? I do have eyes on it. He's actually safe. He's inbounds by about a foot deep of the pond. Wow, what a break there for Gannon. A couple of breaks for Gannon, keeping him in the mix. The bridge hole with Macbeth. Ooh, Very tricky. left. Very early. Should settle down safe. There you go, right inside circle one. Not ideal, but an opportunity. Yeah, could go back to back and climb up to 17. That's still three clear of his next closest competitor in sixth place, Corey Ellis, who's shooting five under through 12. Oh, two, just made it. Yeah, Corey Ellis just made another birdie nice. on hole 12, so closes the gap to two. Orem next to act on eight's fairway. 350 to the pin. Some body English on this. A lot of body English. That's good, a good tree. tree. Absolutely. I was heading into places you don't want to go. Into the mucky muck. Yeah. Get up and down for his four. Really no need to run that putt. Put towards OB again. Barilla, 320. That's the number you'd like. Yep. Total control number, 320 feet. Going Firebird again, I imagine. Yes, sir. Right over that stump and... Oh, yeah, I like the looks of this, Ian. Ooh, Anthony Barella nearly skips in for Eagle, bounces under the cage in the bullseye. That's a drop-in for A.B. What a shot. That was fantastic, timely shot for Anthony Barella. Applying a little bit of pressure. Trying. Yes, he is. That will likely get him within one of Burr. We'll see about Waisaki next. That was an absolute dime from Anthony Barella. Perfect oh anticipation gosh. with that Firebird. Fires it at the stump. Little bit of flex. Knew it hook up. Going to get some help from the wind and a little favorable kick off the bucket, too. On nine, Klein. I like that swing. There you go. Bullseye for the Michigander. Over to Waisaki. 3.05. Dig in. And it does so. See a green flag over yes, there. We We've got Inside. a Bushnell update 40 feet, actually. For Rick. That's what they said, yeah. 40 feet. We'll see if wow. it updates, yeah. Didn't look like it was that bad. It didn't. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Anthony Barella, advantage here on hole eight. Mm -hmm. Two fantastic shots. Big spike hyzer up and around. That tasty Firebird flex down the middle. Our Bushnell crew has Burr at 65, Orm at 70. Just a huge thanks to our Bushnell crew hustling all over both of these courses all week long. Big time. Mm -hmm. 
smart play there from Matty O. Mm -hmm. Not much else you can do. Burr, as Brian mentioned, will find his disc barely inbounds. Wow, that was one heck of a play. Oh, wow. Down in the mucky muck for his third, though. Living oh, the edge. Is that a frog hopping off? A frog or a turtle or something? Mm -hmm. We might need a Zooka replay on that. And the angle, not good, and that's smart golf. Yeah, it was. Wanted nothing to do with that putt. Yeah. Bushnell crew on point. Waisaki for birdie. Putting right at OB. Clutch Rick. He wasted no time with that. He had full confidence he was about to pop that one dead in the heart. Big putt from Wysocki. That was massive. Not just big, that Momentum. was massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regain control of this lead card. Keep that stiff arm off of the fantastic birdie coming up from Anthony Barella. Barella two back of Wysocki now. He will be one back of Ginn and Burr as he drops in par. Burr also one back of Waisaki. One more look at this Waisaki putt. 100% death putt. All day long death putt. Nerves of steel ice in his veins. You'll love it. And a quick break while they make their way to Nines T back in just a few. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. I mean, it's literally the most popular disc of all time in the history of the sport. At its core, it's one of the most important tools a player has in their bag, a dependable, straight-flying mid-range. But the legacy of the buzz goes a lot deeper than just that. Paul Macbeth for birdie, hole nine. There we go. I still don't think it's too late. You can't count them out at this point. You could just, you could birdie out if you. He absolutely could birdie yeah. out, you know, and there's a couple of holes he could pop an ace in that maybe not the sidearm <laughs> hole coming up, but that next one straight one down the tunnel. You know, get over the water tower. There's, there's, there's a few shots. You know, you could make a peek at get eagle. Sixteen. He gets aggressive on thirteens. Sixteen with a roller. The eight year old had a drop in eagle today, by the way, on Those sixteen. Are possible. Yeah. They are. I mean, it's a very aggressive play. Obviously, you do run the risk of running off the fairway and mm -hmm. potentially taking yourself out of position for birdie three. But you could pull off the miracle, get down there for eagle. Mm -hmm. Barella on the box, two off the pace. Going to fade out a bit, but it should have the length, but pin high. Gotta oh, sit. it sounds OB. Wow. Don't see that miss too often. Not Long typically. and left. Yeah, usually guys are going to hang it out on the right side. It doesn't fade or end up about pin high circle's edge on the right, but deep. And, ooh, it's a mistake you don't want. Rick grabbing a justice. Very overstable mid-range. Like, big rip over on that one. Should spike in. That's following AB, but does dry up a little short. That's the typical miss right there, yep. just inside circle one. Off to the left. Burr. Way up 
top with this one, Ian. Bird does something. Oh, uh, oh no. Did that really? That may have. I see a red flag, Ian. What a horrible ground reaction. That was pretty, pretty brutal. He has to go to the drop zone as well. That's Come super on. unfortunate. He tried to really spike that thing in there and caught a little too much edge. Orem. There we go, Ian. I like the looks of this. The sunglasses move, so you know it's a good shot. Beautiful swing there from Matteo. Totally under control. And we are swinging over to Macbeth on our Eric Hole. Hole 10, early recognition is critical in the fight against cancer. They are our official cancer prevention charity of the Disc Golf Pro Tour all year long. Shot change here from Macbeth from round one. Went to the Luna on the right side, this time looking for the flex. Trying to taper out a little early. Got to hit the brakes in a hurry. There is OB over there, Ooh, and that is gone. where it is. Going to have a lengthy putt for par. Barella's reaction just a few moments ago. Yep. He wants it, man. So bad is his first. it has been so close so many times. Barella's third now. That's a nice looking swing. That could drop right under the bucket. Does do so. Limiting the damage at least. That's all you can do. Burr from the DZ. It's a 280 foot shot. Plays downhill, so it's not going to feel quite as long. It's really just about a touch. You know, it's a feel. Really Get out of town, baby. From the drop zone, Kevin Burry daggers it into the bottom of the bucket. Buckets. Incredible. What a recovery play from Gavin. That's one way to say a part on that. Look You don't see that very often out here on hole nine. I don't think I've ever seen it. I think that was a first for me as well. Now we can start looking on our OTP shot of the day at least. Yeah, that's definitely in contention. Definitely worthy. Live for the drone cam, too, Philo. That was kind of cool. I thought he hung out way too far outside. You're not used to watching shots 200 feet in the air, to be fair. Super overstable. Pushes it some 35, 40 feet out over the gallery. Check the reaction. Hands up. That's what's up. Boom. Oh, that didn't matter. <laughs> Gosh, this guy's had a lot of highlights in his young career, hasn't he? He is a highlight machine. From 280. Big Dropping wide. the dime. Oh, oh, right oh. in the bottom. Like I said, he yeah. jackknifed that thing in the bottom of the basket. Almost jumped back out. Mm -mm -mm. Waisaki. There you go. There you go. Rick. Despite the heroics, a bird will grab a stroke. Didn't get big putted. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nice Seen one. that happen a bunch of times, <laughs> haven't we? Uh huh. Or him to get to 19. This would tie him with Barella. <sighs> Uncharacteristic miss from circle one. Patio usually so solid from that range. He missed it in the right place. It was an aggressive high putt. Yeah. Unfortunate. Nice. Check Gannon grabbing that disc from the target. Get a great ovation from this gallery. You got it. Right. Absolutely. That much, man. Yeah. Oh, that didn't matter. Couldn't have been more than an inch or two. No. Macbeth to say par. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, great putt. Macbeth. Range. 
trying to stay in the conversation. He has slipped today, though. Not really. He's still in fifth place. He's just not on the pace, you know what I mean? Oh, he's I mean, not... pace-wise, he's slipped down. Rick he's... has grabbed three strokes on him today. He has, yeah. as far as the pace is concerned. Paul <laughs> McBeth started today in fifth place, currently in fifth place. Yeah. Still got a couple of strokes on Corey Ellis. A few holes ahead of him. curling back in as what? A lot of breathing room behind that, so you know Paul McBeth doesn't look backwards. He's only looking forwards. Gonna have to put some work together here on this back nine to make a big push. Thank you. the drone camera. Not a whole lot for Mr. Gan Burr to worry about at the moment. Mm -hmm. A couple of clear from Anthony Barella, three from Matteo. Really just T and Rick right now, two man horse or a two man horse race, if you want to call it that, two man race. Anthony Burrell has been roller coastering all around. Hard to take him down when you're giving him back with bogeys. That's three bogeys for Anthony Barella so far. That definitely hurts. No, no, no. That, that was the GK effect. Rick, looks like he's gonna forehand the Royal Rive. I like this option. Wind, we've got a tailwind, slight right to left. It's pushing the disc, but out towards their left, correct. So this should help hold his disc up a little bit. Mitigate the big finish. Beautiful, Ricky Wysocki nearly skips in for ace. Ooh. Inches from the rim. Ooh. We are seeing some highlights. That might be the shot of the day. I was gonna say, you could also give it that, that putt on eight from Ricky. That could be the OTB shot of the day if he ends up taking this down. Agreed. Burr, a lot of golf left in between though. That was the kickstarter of momentum for Ricky Wysocki. He's about to string it up for three in a row. Gannon go at mid-range. Got to get a birdie here. You don't want to go three pars in a row when Ricky Wysocki's making three birdies in a row. That is headed towards the out-of-bounds boundary oh and goodness. just does slide out. That's the wrong direction, my man. The wind. That, yep, that crossing wind's going to accelerate your disc and push it out towards that out-of-bounds stride. Just got to take that into consideration. Got to test that right wall of trees out there on the right side a bit more. Orem. Matteo has the right idea. A little more flex, but I don't know if he's got the height. Missed it just by a bit. Yep. If he would have had that three, four feet higher, the wind might have got under the rim of the disc, stood it up, push it over. Long putt for Matteo. Barella, like that forehand play from Waisaki. Goes to it as well. There we go. Mm. That might have been closer than Rick's. That tree might have just it, killed the ace run. Yeah. It might have been a little hot. It that might have been. That might have been a very favorable tree nip there for Anthony Barella <laughs> that had some heat on it. Ricky Wysocki, though, he played this beautifully, keeping it low and tight, little cut. Ground play, oh. fair skip. Oh. Okay, brought him to his knees. <laughs> Gosh, that forehand makes so much sense in this win, doesn't it? And when you got it like Rick and AB. Such a utility, such a weapon out here on the tour. Macbeth on 11. That's got to sit down in a hurry. That bounds. He'll have another chance to save par after an OB drive. Not what you need. That's... This is a must-get, one of these must-get par threes you mentioned earlier, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The par threes out here are pretty scorable. There's a couple earlier that are tough with three and four, but they're there. They're gettable. Ooh. Little string assist. I think that just had enough backspin yeah. B button to simmer down. I think he would have been safe regardless, but yes, sir. a little string help never hurts. Waisaki sitting on two strokes. Thanks to birdies on eight and nine while Burr take, took par. 
And Gannon Burr just slid out of bounds. He's going to be putting for par from circle two. Ricky wysaki has got a head bumper for a birdie. Oh. You yeah. know, it's yeah, about to right. stretch it out. Two more strokes potentially if Gannon doesn't convert. Matty O from looks like beyond all circles. 70 feet from our Bushnell crew. He's good from those every once in a while. Oh, oh, surf the it. rim. <laughs> Goodness. A half an inch from being a big bucket. Over to Burr. We've got this ranged at 50 feet. This is a must make for Gannon Burr if he wants to win this tournament. To avoid the two stroke swing. Tickles, but does not convert on the par save. Waisaki will have a four stroke lead after he drops in his birdie make. Barella for two. A comfortable Ricky with a four stroke lead. That's a scary Ricky. I was about to say, man, Rick's about to play the smartest, most conservative eight holes you've ever seen in your life. He knows how to win. He knows how. He's in the driver's position. He is leading the tournament, four strokes, eight holes. Plenty of birdie holes up ahead. He's going to play smart, conservative shots, and if he's going to have anything bad happen, it's going to be something out of his control. Macbeth to save three. That's home, but that's not the score he needed on 11. Klein, he saw the drive. Here's the comeback birdie putt. Line, just a couple paces from the bucket. And our final group has gotten to hole 11, Philo. Yeah, this is a gotta get. Yeah, it's so routine. Little sidearm chip shot, barely 300 feet. Only thing is you don't see the target from the basket, so you're just kind of picking a spot out there. Any of these two feather banners out here is a good place to aim. Throw something over stable, play it for a circle's edge, bounce and bump and run, if you will. Just don't get aggressive towards the basket. That's usually going to result in an out of bounds. Waisaki on the tee. That's aggressive ground play. Got to stop. Got to stop. Circle's edge putt for Ricky Waisaki. A little underthrown. It was. Risky putt as well on the elevated basket from Circle's edge. Barilla. That's way too high, too tight. Did it kick out? Maybe no. Out. No. Just not the right shape. You could tell instantly, man. Yeah. Play this hole <laughs> enough times, you know exactly when it leaves someone's hand if that has the right intentions, the right attitude or not. And such a touchy shot for these guys who throw so hard. I'm sure it's hard to slow down so much for just 300. Yeah. Orem, better. Much better. too hot gosh shape was right but he got it so high in the air he allowed the wind to get underneath the disc accelerated a little bit and it's a very fast 300 man very fast 300 Gannon Burr opportunity here to stick one in close put a little pressure on Rick with his putt in circle one advantage best of the bunch by far see why Saki's disc inside circle one we'll have that to make it four in a row last three holes it's been all Ricky Wysocki huge putt on hole eight death putt 
Got away from him a little bit on the bridge hole, but bang, smashes that one right in the middle. And then this shot right here, man, inches away from being a one. Mm. That would have definitely stuck if that got over the rim. That had zero speed once it got to the chain. I would say skip aces are the best aces, they are. you know? They are so much fun because that's all anticipation and planning. Mm -hmm. There's no real luck in a skip ace when you do it right. Waisaki. To maintain that four-stroke lead. Yeah. Yeah. Waisaki show. He is dialed. Looking real strong he is. Only guy without a bogey on this lead card. Barella to save par. A little bit of a heady crosswind for Anthony Barella. Got to keep the height on point here. Needs this to save five behind Waisaki. Common miss when the wind starts blowing in your face and across you. It's so hard to lift the disc up into the air. You know the wind wants to jackknife that disc. Can't really be surprised with that miss from Barella under the circumstances. A bird, look at birdie. Locking out the people walking on the bridge pretty nicely. Short putt, gotta keep your focus. Now it's hard when there's distractions, especially our golf eyes are up on the horizon. Orem to save par. That is in. Barilla will drop in a bogey. Time running out for AB, Philo. I think the time is out for Anthony Barella. Too much of a roller coaster this round for uh, AB. Just up and down, up and down, beating yeah. himself out of this win. Waisaki, the birdie make on 11. They are headed to 12. We'll take a quick break on the Disc Golf Network until they get there. Power Grip, Europe's number one disc golf shop, is now available in the United States. Our selection is constantly growing as we build on strong relationships throughout the disc golf industry. It doesn't matter the question you have, where you're from, or your skill level. Power Grip is here to help. Shop us online at PowerGripUSA.com. Hi, I'm Andrew Marweed, and for the last three years, I've been one of the top putters in the world. I chose the DGA Steady for its straight, consistent flight path and the confidence it gives me on the green. Plus, it comes in both beaded and beadless versions with a wide variety of plastics. I prefer the Stone Steady BL. You can find your Steady at discgolf.com. The Millennium Scorpius is a 12-speed overstable distance driver. It's one of the best ultra-long distance drivers in the game today. 
Go grab one today at golfdisc.com. Great Lakes Disc, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a fully stocked retail disc golf store that fulfills all of your disc golf needs. We carry all of the major manufacturers, accessories, and offer player and event sponsorship, along with tournament payout assistance. To learn more about Great Lakes Disc, visit greatlakesdisc.com. Hey, I'm Johannes. Hey, I'm Jonathan. And today we're going to talk about how to aim. If you have some problems with the distance, the timing, and uh, pretty much everything. This is kind of the, the ground or the beginning of the throw. Here we go. Then we're going to throw some forehands. Oh yeah. Then you just stroke the board and then you push it in the basket. You should never ever throw your max on a golf course. What? <laughs> Paul Macbeth, a few moments ago, the T of 12. You like it, fellow? Yeah, he's gonna have some helping win, push the lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh. no eye. problem. Yeah, there's a birdie for the beast. And let's check out a Cordy Ellis scorecard. Speaking of birdies, oh my. From what I'm seeing here on you, just the man is putting for eagle up ahead on hole 16. So I imagine he threw down one heck of a roller, got himself into circle two. Gosh. And could get it to 10 under. <laughs> That's one heck of a round out here on a championship Sunday. Corey Ellis up seven spots into the top 10. And what was 11, 1083 rated from Gannon earlier this week? I believe that was the number. Yeah. Waisaki on the tee of 12. Trying to anticipate that crossing wing hangs it out there way wide. Another near ace run from Waisaki. He is dialed. That's five in a row. Hard to take the man down when he keeps making birdies. And he kind of missed a gimme on seven, too. He's been throwing darts he out here. He did. That really probably ramped up his focus, missing that I short put. Got a little fire in his, in his step, you know. And yeah, yeah. Burr next. Heiser swing from Gannon, tracking. Wax the water towel and water tower, excuse me, and retreats wickedly into the OB. To the drop zone goes Burr. Yes, he does. He's going to need another miracle to chuck this one in. And that Rick lead just got two strokes bigger. It did. Orem. Well, arrive from Orem. This is inside. Yeah, it's danger of having the same reaction. It's it safe, though. It does. That was a favorable bounce off of the tower there for Matty O. You don't usually see that. That was pretty friendly. That was very friendly. Barella. Height. Barella problems again. Oh, 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 it tried. Unfortunately, Anthony Barella is headed to the drop zone twice too much. <sighs> Let's check out a Ricky Waisaki reaction to this drive. He is fired up. Well, after watching the closest competitors to him just both throw out of bounds, I'm You're sure right. he's feeling really comfortable right now. They are putting zero stress on my man Waisaki. Mm -hmm. Can play so conservatively now the rest of the way in. Doesn't have to take any unnecessary chances. If he gets out of position, he even has a little bit of breathing room to cough up a bogey if absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. No, drops on heroics there for Burr. That's going to be a bogey at best. Barella from that same drop zone, 170 in. There you go. 
drop in four there for Barella, but that's going to drop him back into a tie with Orem, assuming he pars out from where he is. No pars for Ricky lately, though. Mm -mm. Looking like five straight birdies. And with six to play, looking like Rick will have a six-stroke lead. It's too many strokes. You're trying to win. If you're one of these underclassmen trying to knock down one of these lead sharks, you got to hang with them the whole time and keep that pressure on. There's too many bogeys on the card. Orem to leapfrog Barella into third. Or two too low. He will be tied with AB. Also, Paul Macbeth and Corey Ellis. Ellis did miss his eagle bid on 16, but cleaned up birdie for five straight. It's a nice stretch to take advantage of on the back nine. Some tough par fours, technical par three. Be checking the wind around the corner yes, from the water is. tower. That's a heady play to save bogey. It's definitely blowing off of his right side. Yeah. Other side of putt to Dan Burr. Fortunately for bogey with the OB stroke off the bad reaction from the water tower. We got to be even more annoying watching the next competitor throw an equally not impressive shot and getting a good break. Yeah, true. There is Waisaki piling on six stroke lead as he makes that long walk to 13. Goodness, that happened fast, didn't it? It really did. Seemed right around hole six or seven. Things were so close, just like that. We've got a very long walk to 13, so we'll take a break on the network. Back to the action when they get there. Worldwide success. This is the story of the Cloudbreaker. are calling. Out here, be free. See who we are. Always striving further with each step. Here, we don't just hike. We Moab on. Details are everything when you're at the top of your craft. It starts with a sound routine, body alignment, grip pressure, making sure that the upper body and the lower body are in sync, angle control, which then leads into the follow through. Everything has to be correct. My craft is in the details because details are the difference.
Here are your 10 10 discs hot rounds of the day. Corey Ellis, top of that board. Alden Harris. Solid in the house, eight under. Had a little bit of bumpiness out there in the middle of his round, but really did pull together a solid one with an eight. And then there's Rick. Seven down already, just through 12. This could be another career setting day, one of those record setting days for Ricky Wysocki, the clip and the pace he's on right now. A lot of birdies out ahead of him. Doesn't need to be aggressive though. He's so far out ahead, it's kind of like almost gotten boring for Rick at this point. He just has to play smart and safe and he can cruise control this one into victory lane. And the driver's seat on autopilot. Kick up his legs and have a cocktail if you could. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Call Paul Omen with a five down today. Kevin Jones up nine spots in a 12th. Mm -hmm. Feels like we haven't seen a lot of ton of Kev this year. No, I haven't seen a bunch of them on the camera cards. Such a tremendous talent. It's nice to see him claw back up into that top 12 tie, top 15. Andrew Prezi played a strong round. He's trying to get it into the house. Up seven spots into the top 10. Good paying weekend for these guys. Yes, sir. Flying this tricky par 513, sir. Yeah, I guess you could call it tricky. If you're a righty backhand player, this is probably the... I'd, it's a fun par 5. I'm not going to say it's the easiest par 5, but it's pretty straightforward. You need three good hyzers, and you should get yourself in the circle. This little patch of grass right here the drone's looking at, that's ideal. If you can stay in front of those trees, close to the water... Then you can see where you want the disc to land, right in the middle of this second peninsula past this big bush. Anywhere in there, it gives you a mid 300s approach into the green. You do got a couple of wires hanging out over the water about a third of the way. You gotta navigate those and, you know, just aim for a spot, circle's edge, and know the ground play is gonna help you make up the last 25 feet into the basket. Pretty straightforward. Just got to mind the wind. That's really what the big contester is on this hole is the wind. If it's pushing hard, it usually does over your right shoulder, kind of pushing you towards the left side of the fairway going across. Just kind of have to hang it out there and just anticipate it. Paul McBeth already across the water for his second. Brian, while we're watching this, talk about the wind here players are going to have to deal with on this hole 13. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's definitely tough. I mean, head cross to the left. I mean, I guess the headwind isn't terrible for stalling your disc out on the short side because you obviously don't want to be too deep on this hole, but yeah, not easy. And so that'll turn into a different kind of a tail cross for their second shots. Usually crossing from their right side though on this hole. Wind's usually coming off across the lake. To see across the lake, okay. yes, into their face a little bit, but more sideways. So typically it's a helping wind for the righty backhand player. More yardy. That's just fine. Any Sherlock Holmes fans in the house? That was a good dig yesterday, man. Yeah. I don't know how you think of things <laughs> like that. Brandon Lata. Catching oh. some shrubbage on the way. That didn't sound oh. good. It's on the green, at least. All right. You can see it down there, left-hand side of your screen. Looks like the final group has reached the T of 11. They are waiting for that fairway to clear. 13, excuse me. Rick sitting on six strokes all of a sudden. And if you're watching on YouTube today, consider throwing the Disc Golf Network a subscribe. A lot of action coming your way soon. Des Moines Challenge next weekend, then two weeks. Worlds. Oops. And we've got some great events up in the Northeast. MVP Open up in Maple Hill. GMC up in Vermont. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of property. It, if you haven't been up there yet, just for leisure play or to come spectate this big tournament about to go down, Put that on your bucket list. That's on my... I haven't been there yet, man. Smuggler's Notch ah. is fantastic. What a beautiful place. The staff there, everybody's so friendly and welcoming. Uh -huh. Beautiful property, beautiful facility. And there's the PDGA Pro Worlds in Emporia. Go grab your tickets now. If you don't grab tickets, grab a Disc Golf Network subscription so you can check out all the action. Five days. Emporia. Big crowning world champion. 
Back to 13's fairway for Randon. Dangerous play here for Randon going full flexor, trying to get to the peninsula the basket's on. Did he do it? That looks good. I think that's a green flag. Randon has an absolute cannon. Did you see the speed on that release? That was massive, dude. Massive. You really don't see many guys going after the green from that position. They'll no. usually just chip it up, chip it on, and try to one putt and get out of there. Yeah. That was like a nasty flex with a Halo Destroyer. Wow. Ricky Waisaki all of a sudden sits on six strokes. We got six to play. Cruise it's going to take something crazy. He's going to have to beat himself, and those guys are going to need to catch on fire with a quickness right now. That's Gannon true. Bird just hasn't really been on point today. Anthony Barilla has been a roller coaster in this whole round. Birdie bogey, birdie bogey. Just can't seem to right the ship. He's making plenty of birds, but, man, he's just giving them back with, I would say, silly mistakes, honestly. It's – you're not wrong. You know, yeah. They haven't been like, oh, I threw a good shot and it caught a root and rolled out of bounds or something like that. He's just kind of throwing them there, mm -hmm. not connecting on a couple of putts inside circle one. And just like that, Ricky Waisaki has blown the doors open. Back over to 13 for Macbeth, throwing three. Really anticipating that wind push. Perfect. And yeah, it is a bullseye for the five time. That should get Paul to 19 down, jumping Orem. Back to the tee for Waisaki. Rick ripping an enforcer across the water. Just fine, right there. One of those trees. Great position to do another one very similar to that. On his way to another birdie. Orem. Royal Rive for Maddie. Look at the wind. Yep. Gonna get a lift and a push. That is a bit out of position. And it's going to be safe, but not ideal. Canoe approved. Burr. looking swing. Looks like he got, he got the wind read, didn't he? Yes, he did. Ooh, I don't know about that landing zone. Hopefully he's on the outside of that tree. That'll definitely free things up for him. While we watch the Spirella shot, Brian, thoughts on the position there for Burr? I actually think it's a much better spot than Ricky is. Ricky's a little bit too far up and has to swing his second way over the water, but Gannon actually has a straighter look despite being a little bit longer. And Barella. That's about as close as you can cut it, isn't it? But it's fantastic, isn't it? Great angle. And Orm yeeted this thing across the water beautifully. You can grab a yeet of your own by heading to hooligandisc.com. Mine is on the way. I will have a yeet report at Worlds, I promise. There is a Drew Gibson signature yeet you can buy as well. Yo, grateful that one checked up and stayed in bounds. That was leaking out towards the left boundary line. Not quite been the day Matteo was hoping for. Just one under par, but yeah. still getting some love from the fans. They all appreciate Always. him. He's one of those guys. I can use my line about Matteo. Two types of people in the world. Matteo fans and people that haven't met him yet. There you go. There's a walk around the lake. I see people walking from 17's tee to the green as well. A little crossing of the cards. They're heavily outnumbered by the gallery trailing. <laughs> Beautiful shot of these finishing holes. Klein. Imagine this is his third or his second shot. Third shot should be. Yeah, third shot. All right. Here we go. A little outside, high side, circle two. Hey, birdie look. Birdie look, downhill look. Have some wind blowing in his face. 
Speaking of Drew Gibson, he's up four spots into a tie for eighth today. That's doing some good work. Get it into is. that top ten. Yeah, there he is in that tie for eighth, along with Chris Clemens. We've been seeing a lot of lately. Corey Ellis up ten spots. Trying to get it maybe to 11. Let's see how he's doing on the fairway on hole 18. Ah, they're calling him putting for par from circle two now for Corey Ellis up ahead on hole 18. So might slide back a stroke if he can't convert on the big putt. And that's life when you're Matty O. You just get high fives wherever you go. As you should. Yeah. Where's the stroll tied? Is it behind him? I imagine so. Got a stroller caddy today. <laughs> a stroller is honestly, it was pretty nice. I had my son Max take him out there, top him the, the Bob stroller, put the bag on top on the canopy. Not a bad way. I don't know anything about that life, sir. <laughs> <laughs> my kid's been on the course since he's about six months old. <laughs> Only vicariously through friends like you, my friend. <laughs> awesome. I'll borrow their, their child for a little while. I'm going to get them some final <laughs> lessons, man, if I have my way about it. Hey, man, I have a couple of friends I've been mentoring their kids a little bit yeah? here and there. Yeah, they're young guys, too, you know, three, four, five, six. You know, That's cool. They're all into the disc golf. and two o'clock. They just love hanging out and playing. Man. I gotta get Max signed up. You're doing virtual lessons these days as well, aren't you? Yeah, man, it's been a lot of fun. Just kind of started that program up and... Definitely something if you guys are interested in, you can hit me up on the old Instagramery or Facebook and we can chat about it. I'll tell you what to do. Nice. Team Philo? Yeah, Team Philo on the Instagram or, or the Facebook. Matty O with the Royal Rive. We'll have to trust that this disc swings back in time. Plenty of hang time for Matteo. Going to be up high on the hill. Going to see something similar to that on the next shot, I imagine. Hard to bring him in low on the third shot into the last peninsula. Yeah. Woo! First down, Matteo. Burr. That's a solid angle. Nice looking shot. Yeah, stress free. That should be in the bottom part too. Shouldn't go up too high. There you go. That's a good shot. Right in the middle. Over to Moriarty for Birdie. Wads from distance. Ooh. Yeah. A little bit too much want for Wads. Almost dropped it in. I'll look down at 13. You can kind of see the hopping spots. Mm -hmm. Skipping on down the fairway around peninsulas. Waisaki, he's... Hmm. Brian was right. He's a little further up the fairway than ideal. He's going to really have to spike this one up and around. That looks pretty good. Just got to get a good forward push. Ugh. I think that got onto the edge. We saw it land in the fairway, Brian. Did you happen to see if it stayed there? I'm actually walking up to it right now. It looked like it hit pretty vertical on the slope, so we'll see. That could be a terrible lie for him if it rolled. Yeah, agreed. Barella's disc is away. Well done from Anthony Barella. That's the preferred landing zone down on the bottom if you can get there. And be scary to aim for that spot, but it really does open up that third shot. Mm -hmm. Klein with a long birdie look ahead on the green. Oh, yeah. Cash money. Definitely want to mention Corey Ellis does get it into the house. He there did it. you see his name, 10 under par, makes the circle two putt to cap off a 10 under performance. Almost clean, one bogey, hole five. Unfortunately, got a bogey there, but 
whole bunch of blue on Corey Ellis's card. He screams at the leaderboard. Ten spots, currently a podium finish. Still got a few guys out there that could change that for him, but wow, what a round for Corey Ellis. Yeah, went, went OB three times, saved par twice. One of those on 18. Super solid. Macbeth drop in on 13 for the birdie. He's at 19, just one off Burr in second place. Tie for third with Ellis. Back over to Waisaki. Where is the disc? Oh, this is fine. Oh, that was plenty good. That looked a lot scarier from that vertical angle yeah. we saw. Must have got a friendly reaction. Uh, Waisaki 360 to the pin. Hangs very wide and high. Plenty of space to work with. He's going to miss Rick. on the safe side every time now, isn't he? <laughs> Barely missed, though. That ain't a miss. That's in the bullseye. Rick's about to string up double turkey, man. Is he really? Ooh. Oh, yeah, you got some pep in your step when you're throwing like that. It's only one more hole that could really cause him a headache on the way home, and that's the next par four with that water and the tee shot, and I just don't really see him making any silly mistakes there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, dang near spiked that thing into the bucket. A few feet short. Let's go. That's right. Orem. Well done for Matty O. Bounces that right on the bullseye. A little bit of trickle out, just a pace or two pass. Stress-free putt coming up for Matteo. Yeah, should be no problem on 14's tee with Macbeth. I'd say this is one of the most demanding tee shots on the whole course right here. Got to throw the low cut into the headwind, miss some limbs, and Macbeth just posterizes the drive. Ooh, that's a bonus drive. Huge bonus. On the edge of the water, you're going to have a massive angle into the green. Anything that pests that little nook is exceptional. Barella. Asking for this to settle down in a hurry. It does so nicely for Barella inside circle one. Back to Burr, throwing three. Again, it just 270 into the pin. Ooh. He hung that out there a little too much, Ian. I think that's that might be a red flag, move. it yeah. is. You know, might see his disc, but I believe he is surrounded by water. That's a that's an unforced error there. Another untimely mistake on? for Gannon Burr, making it that much harder to get over the hurdle to take down a Waisaki. It's just not going to happen today. No. Nope. Pretty safe to say. Live look down at the final group and gallery approaching the green there on 13. Just out on the end of that peninsula. Kayak squad rolling in. Klein, T of 14. Great speed control. Smooth swing, never left the line. Burr grabbing his disc from OB. Par putt coming up from Gannon inside circle one. We have some awkward footing once again. Hopefully he's taking his meter from the rocks, not just from the water. It does have that stipulation. See, he's doing it again. Get your meter from there. Should say so. There they go. They just gave him the heads up. Now Gannon Bird taking that extra little relief, get some better footing. Should feel much more comfortable now. It's good sportsmanship there by the fellas that to fill him in. Really was. They didn't have to do that. Nobody did it for Ricky in uh in <laughs> round yeah, one. They surely didn't. They're like, go on ahead and get in there, buddy. <laughs> you figured that one, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> 
They might not have known to be fair, though. Okay, and Burr slides that one home for par. A little sloppy here on the back nine for Gannon. You can survive with that three under on the front, but. Let's see, one over so far. One over on the back, just not gonna get it done today. Orem for Brady. As expected. Barella for three, or sorry, four on the par five. And Waisaki, six in a row. All smiles for Rick now. Pressure turns that man into diamonds. Yeah, now all the pressure is off, and he can just relax and have fun. Soak it all up, man. Mm -hmm. And Ricky will be the first player to win three Elite like Series this year. How about that parody this year? <laughs> like right now. <laughs> he won Texas State's in the DDO earlier this year. Got to like his world's chances after taking down DDO. Absolutely. Getting hot right here at Ledgestone at the right time. This win should put him back on top of the tour standings as well. Should leapfrog or be pretty close to surpassing Heimberg. Just 20 strokes behind him, or 20 points, excuse me, behind Heimberg right now for the tour lead. There's some cash at the end of that rainbow as well. Klein into the green on 14 after a great drive. Great shot shape there from Klein. You can't draw it up much better than that. A little unfortunate with the rollout. Sit down. That's just fine for Kyle. Yep. Great shot. Macbeth next to the into the green on 14. Circle's edge putt for Macbeth down the hill. And let's check out our tour standings. There, there you go. go. You didn't need all that extra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick will grab 100 points for the win. Let's see if he's got it. Actually, he might. I think he's got eight already, so he'll improve on, he had a 10th place finish and a 12th place finish. That got him 44 points, so should add at least 56 points to his score. There you go, and Macbeth is also creeping up the leaderboard, trying to narrow the gap as well. Earn as many points as he can. Gannon Burr also in the mix in the conversation. Currently in fourth place in the standing, so may not be your weekend, but you can still Help your cause for the end of the season. Waisaki's tee shot is perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. Pressure off the rest of the way for Rick. Yep. Rick just going mid range, compass off the tee. So smart. Orem. sit down in a hurry. And it looks like it dries up just in time for Matty O. That left side can sneak in pretty fast when you underthrow the disc. Barella next. T-Bird three. Will it hit that nicely? It will not, and it will go OB. <sighs> AB just one down on the day. That drive not helping. It sure is tough to find your best golf when you need it the most. Gannon going to the mid as well. That's his M4. Also a very nice swing right down the middle. Never a doubt into the sweet spot. Set up to attack this green. And they are off down the fairway. 
another look at this Waisaki. Drive on 14. Job done off the tee for Rick. Ahead on the green, Macbeth. Bang, bang. Tricky. That, trick. that pushes him in, into a second place tie with Burr. As you can see right there, a little three pack of 19s behind those two. Ellis already in the house, though. So Rick looking solid with a yeah. seven stroke lead. We'll watch those other places, though. <laughs> We're see keeping how, an eye we'll on We'll see them. how those shake out. Mm -hmm. Orem with the Royal Rive. Long carry up to the green. Matty O, that came out low. That doesn't have a chance at all. She gone. That shot's got to be at least 12 to 15 feet up in the air. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of a downgrade in his run up. Made him kind of push that one low. Oh. Uh, Looked like he was up high on the hill, kind of a downwards trajectory to his run up. So hard to throw up the grade when your body's pointed down. Got over on that a hair too much and going to get a drop some ways back. Down the way. <laughs> for reference, Ricky's at 450. So that had to be 500 plus for Orem into the green. I'd imagine in that 515 range, yeah. yes. Ricky Wysocki, a very comfortable hyzer play into here. Plenty of land to work with. Big, big towering spike hyzer. Very conservative. Yeah. That's where I thought he'd be aiming on the last hole. <laughs> but he pinned that one. He wanted nothing to do with this birdie. He was totally happy taking part here. Yeah. Smart stuff, man. Terry reacting to Matty O's shot. That's probably the worst shot he's ever seen Matty O throw. Yeah. That one's not getting posted. He was reading for him. <laughs> yeah. No first down on that. That was a turnover on downs. Yeah. Terry reads for everybody. <laughs> that was Saving a turnover right on downs. Game for that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty, pretty hardcore over there. He is. <laughs> Runs a tight ship at Bam. Yeah, he does. Burr into the green from 410. That has a good look to it. Hung it out there super wide. Nicely done. Gannon Burr spikes it inside circle one on the high side. A little 26-footer down the hill. Shouldn't be an issue for Gannon. A, B next. 405 from the pin, but also on the wrong side of the fairway for this shot. Kind of, yeah, I think he might have got far enough up in front of that tree. Yeah, he's going to be able to have a swing okay. go out and around the willow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he can go. He could flex it up and over. Yeah, he can, but uh, this is not ideal. Good job done there from AB. Yeah. That looks inside circle one. What a recovery shot. High risk, high reward there for Anthony Barella. All that arm speed pays off. Opportunity to save his par. Rick was ready to charge on the fairway. What do you think about the bucket hat look, look, Philo? I know it's not for you, but for Rick. Bringing me back to LL Cool J days, <laughs> man. Borum. I said knock you out. <laughs> there you go. 400 feet on this approach for Matt. That's going to R-U-N-N-O-F-T on Matty O deep into circle two. Be a long putt to 
save bogey. Tell me something that's not true. Yeah. No, like seriously. I try not to. Oh, come on. Just <laughs> give me a random one. It's obviously not true. Uh, Paul McBeth putting for Albatross. Blasphemy. There we go. All right, I just made somebody drink. I've been waiting all day for that. <laughs> Is that on the list? That was on the list. <laughs> McBeth on the tee of 15. Keep that Luna sliding. There it is. Perfectly executed drive there for Macbeth. Just a pace or two off the bullseye. Going putter. 315 uphill. Waisaki will just be laying this up for par. His first since hole seven. In a good way. Absolutely. This is not a must birdie hole. Rick firmly in control of this event. Dropped the hammer on these fellas six holes ago, and they have not had a chance since. And it's pretty much got them pinned to the mat now, Ian. Only nine birdies on this one today. It's not an easy birdie to get. No. That wind can really play mind games on you, throwing it out over the water. you got to test the water since the basket's kind of close to the edge over there on the peninsula. It's a long carry. It's hard to throw it low line drive, especially with the wind blowing like that. So, you know, you miss your angle by a hair and the wind can stand it up, hold it out over the water. We saw that happen to Matteo. Get in a bad position with the footing, can't get your hips in the right plane, and it's easy to shove one over into the water. Horum from 50 to save bogey. Just not been Matteo's day. Quiet round. That's going to put him back to one under par. Drop him back into solo sixth, I believe. I think he nailed that. Yes. 18 under par. Mm -hmm. Barella for birdie. That mm. ties him with Paul McBeth, despite the noises it made. Burr, a birdie putt. Like a little head crosswind. Yep, taking his time trying to get a read. This would give him solo second. From that range, you really shouldn't have to alter too much. There you go. Casual slide. Orem for double. Right, that is for double, so he's going to go back to tied with Kyle Klein, 17 under par. Oh, yeah. And there is Bucket Hat Rick dropping in the par. Speaking of Bucket Hat Rick, it made its debut at the 2022 DDO. Same exact outfit, Ian. Ah. Are you superstitious like that, man? Uh, I'm not, are you? Not really, no. <laughs> not like baseball player style? No. I mean, the last time I tried to get superstitious, I almost lost the albatross disc, so oh. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is closing it down on 18, I believe. Oh, my gosh. There it is. Fuck it, half Wasaki! Rick's just having fun, man. Love it. I love fun. his energy on the course. It's transitioned, man. You know? He used to be so serious. Extremely. I mean, he still has his moments, but when it's necessary, you see that intensity, the focus really ramp up, but he's totally chilled. Yeah. Klein on 15. I remember when I first started filming Rick, he would say the only words out of his mouth the entire round would be the score. Right? Yeah. He was not talking at all. But he's really grown. That's normal, though. I think a lot of these competitors, when you come out and you're young and you're talented and you're just so in tune with your game that you just don't want anything to break that mental focus. You don't want to relax. You want to stay in the moment. You want to keep that intensity up, that passion, that drive up. It's just when you're in between the ropes, it's not the time to be buddy-buddy for a lot of these guys. Right. Makes that. Hi, once again. 
That is four in a row for Paul Macbeth. Paul Macbeth currently in a tie for third. Yep, no solo. No, it should be a tie. Tie for second. Tie for second now. Wow, yeah. these you disc scores keep bouncing all over the place. They do. Here is the whole 15 for us, Philo. I like it. Good little turnover mid-range play for you. Yep, nice little medium stable rock. Hang it up there towards the 10 o'clock angle off the tee pad and slow turn that thing over to the right. And usually get a little bit of a helping wind, so you don't want to aim on the inside. You're not trying to miss that tree in the middle by the little bit. You're trying to aim a little wider than that. Let the wind kind of push and slide you over towards the target. Great sidearm hole if you got it. Yeah. Surprised we haven't seen more of that. That big defining tree right there gobbling up all the airspace. It is a beaut, isn't it? It's a gorgeous tree. Burr grabs the M4. There you go. Beautiful looking swing from Gannon Burr. Wants again, drives it right into the middle. Tap in putt for Gannon. Waisaki next. Also looking very good. All right, tries up a hair short and left for Waisaki. Circle two, but I don't think it really matters much at this point. Doesn't feel like it. The icing on the cake. Should he be able to snag a couple more birdies on the way in? Barella. This is the ABR3. Dries up out in circle two. Looked like it had a good shape, but maybe a little low. 16 with Macbeth. I think he goes roller. Oh, yeah. Misses the tree. Oh, this has life. This is a great angle on the stand-up, pushing down oh. towards. No, why? Ah, oh. Easy birdie, but. That had implications that to had get at least another 100 feet. Yeah. It was looking like that had the right intentions. Orem. Back on 15. That might be a little burned over for Matteo. Too bad, creeps right up on circle's edge. 34 foot putt coming up for Matteo. Live look down at the final group making their way up 15's fairway. 16's T right there as well. Oh, someone's teeing off right now. That looked like Moriarty. <laughs> Mint green shorts, I believe, he's uh, wearing today. Yeah. It looks like the chase card is off of two 16's T pad. Should be smooth sailing the whole way through. Way downtown, trying to get it to 20 under. That's a creep over the left side and in. A little bit of late fireworks there for Anthony Barilla. Still an opportunity to snag a podium finish with a couple holes to play. Waisaki from circle two for birdie. Nice. Rick doesn't get it up into the chain, space mask, but the only consequence is a slightly lower rating. Yep. Oh, the 
nice bounce back birdie after the double. Gets back under par. Burr wasting no time, sliding that one in. Rick par. A B. Huge make. Crew had that at 60 feet. In Orem. Hey, yo. Traditional jump putt. Darts that one into the heart. Stroll tied. Back over to Paul on 16. Touchy little approach here. Macbeth going for the hyzer, trying to stall it in. There you go. Drops another dime for Macbeth. Five straight for that man. Yes, it is. And a look down at 16's fairway, Philo. That's the 16. tee is hidden right now, right? 15 is right under hole 18, 17 on the scorecard uh -huh. there. And the tee pad's just off to the left, right around where number 10 or 11 would be on the scorecard. Okay. And you're going to throw through that gap in the trees and slow right turn that thing into the fairway. Basket up there by the left of the end of the hedge line. Yep, about 9,500 feet at the end of the hedge to the left under the trees down there at the top of your screen. Just before the corner of the lake, you see all those people gathered up down there on the bottom left of the green. People crowding in behind the chase card in the middle of the fairway. And here we have Kyle Klein. I guess this is right around 190 feet or so for Kyle. His second Whoa. shot. Jump putt even. Hangs it out over the bush. Just needs to hook back. And it does just in time. And look at that ground play even. Hey. Scary moment maybe for Kyle Klein not yeah. being able to see his disc. He's had quite a few today where he's he's given up on them. They, they worked out. Yeah, that one on hole six to par four. Uh -huh. Thought that was for sure toast. And ends up being a bonus birdie. And then he hated that one on eight as well when it fought through. Yes, it did. Didn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, he caught a tree. Oh, maybe. he caught a tree, didn't he? Yes, he did. There was he another one, though. Zone. Moriarty heading into the hedge line. Unfortunately, things have come undone for Mr. Kyle. Yeah, Wads is struggling today. Seven over on the round. Back-to-back -back double bogeys on holes five and six after opening up bogey bogey. That's just the wrong direction. A lot of water to take on to siphon out of the boat. Well, but that should clean up a birdie, though, on 16. But you don't forget these opportunities to be on a lead card, lead or a chase card when it's not somewhere you're used to being. And yeah. Nice to know that you can earn your way into that position. I know it's tough to swallow the pill that you didn't get the job done and finish the tournament the way you like, but there's always some positive to take away from every situation. Even for guys like Gannon Burr and Anthony Barella, who are right there, start of the day, had an opportunity to take this one down and it's a tough pill to swallow when the day is over and you know you had a chance but couldn't find your best game. Just got to keep plugging away, keep staying positive, keep working for that goal. You'll break through eventually. It happens to the best of them. Yep. You're going to break through. Just got to believe. Keep the confidence up. Don't beat yourself up. You know, you can take note of the mistakes you made and you know, do your little inventory of how you felt about it, but you can always... Learn something from those things. Don't beat yourself up. A lot off for birdie. Your teammate making a nice putt, Philo. Yes, sir, Randy. Strong event himself. I want to get the radar gun on that guy. I'm guessing high 70s, if not mid. Klein for birdie. His time with that wind blowing around on this little straddle putt around the tree. Give his full attention, able to convert. Moriarty cleaning up.
Paul will drop in birdie for five straight. It's really heated up. Excuse and it's me. back 10, as it were. Yeah. He is now tied with this man again. Gannon Burr on the box. Going mid range. A lot of cash between those two spots, man. Second and third. Mm -hmm. gets overstable it should be perfect Ian it's just oh, starting that's to money. that's perfect well oh. done smart golf play there from Gannon Burr yeah it's not a long hole you don't need a huge tee shot you don't just over 300 feet plenty in position it's a downhill play into the green so it's going to feel a bit less in the distance department AB with his roller destroyer giddy up baby let's go Oh, boy. Here we go, Ian. This is how the right line. Not again. Come on. Oh, they're crushing their uh, trees. Soul crushing. <laughs> Roots. That Catch in the corner of the tree. That was heated. That was going to be circling the basket. It man. was the right angle, the right disc, the right speed. All things working right oh. there. One tree to beat. Looks like we'll see an Orem roller as well. Bit early. That's going to turn over into the tree line. And pretty sure he's okay. I don't think that sign is actually the Mando. I think there's a pole out there that they're just reminding you that there is a Mando that you got to stay. Okay. Waisaki. Going Vandal Roller. Aggressive play for Rick here. Very far right. And he chops that one straight into the woods, but a really favorable bounce out here. This is going to dribble its way back into the fairway. Tricky Ricky. What? What a reaction. World champ love. Yeah, the Mando is past. It's in line with the hedges. Yes. It, it kind of a little in a break in between the hedge line. Macbeth, T of 17. Taking the narrow skinny line and the wind is just holding this one up, Ian. Oh, okay, that, I was wondering why it was not hustling over. Yep, a little bit of crosswind out there. You can see it in the ripples, can't you? Yes, you can. Klein next. Uh, Klein sees that. It's going to make the adjustment. I'm sure take it up a bit higher with a bit more spike, but you can't back off the speed. Very wide for Kyle. Uh, if you guys remember day one, Emerson Keith aced this hole 17. Got that for you right now. Ever daddy going to the flick on 17. Drag it out there wide and spike it home. Put it in. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah! Oh, let's go. I called that from Everybody <laughs> hands go up. <laughs> let's yeah. go. I was trying to figure out the, the genesis of let's go the other day because we were talking about that. That was we like were. not a thing growing up. You it know? was not a thing. It yeah. was never what we were talking about. It. it was never an affirmation of thing. It was always an encouragement yeah. or something. Let's go. Come on, boys. Let's go. Yeah. It was never like, oh, he did it. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, it never worked <laughs> out that way. No. I'm really curious. Mm -hmm. Waisaki with the slammer approaching on 16. There you go, a little lazy forearm, bouncing right on circle's edge. Can't play it any better than that. Another birdie. That'll get Rick to nine under on the round. Two holes to play. Ooh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Doo Dudes. Oh, great Danes. Marmadukes. The bestest of boys. It's a lot of dog food. That is, Yeah, that's too expensive for me, man. I got the other like, end of that's not very fun either, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to pick up on the disc golf course, oh, man. Oh, man. My, my 15 Woo. pound dogs are enough. Yeah, you Bird. see that pole there? That's the Mando, yes, I believe. Yes, you are correct, sir. 
Very little bump and run inside circle one. Downhill putt shouldn't be stressful at all. So we've got payouts for you, Philo. You ready? What we got? So first we know is 10,000. Second, 7,000. Racks. So a 3,000 delta there. Mm -hmm. uh, third, 5425. Racks. Fourth, 4,500. Racks. Fifth, we don't, I don't know what that one is. Whew. Yeah. Man, back in the day, that's a one. three grand was a huge payout for first. <laughs> yeah. You walked out of there with three racks after first place, and you were loving life, man. You were three times the money these days. Heinhold is a, a money magician. Orin with a beautiful approach. Born too early, man. <laughs> ah, it was right on time, dude. <laughs> right on time to be here with me, my man. Kyle Klein with a birdie look. Sails that one over the top. Nearly takes out the cameraman. Hopefully Maybe that sat down. It does creep towards the water pretty fast. Barella. What's the distance on this layup? Did they get it for you? Yeah, I'm sure they did. 110 feet? No, we didn't get it. They, they were too slow. That's our, well, we we were too slow on this golf network. Anthony, yeah. yeah, yeah. They already had his, his putt distance up. Macbeth for two. Like a turkey, Macbeth. Trying to bring it into the clubhouse hot. One more hole to go. Be a nice little bounce back, getting it into that podium finish. Being a couple off the pace. Kyle Klein, a lengthy par putt after the blow by. Buzz in the tower. Headwind putt, got a little too high, never dropped. It just got fifth place. It's 4,000 for fifth, even. Racks. Kyle makes that come back in nicely. Ledgestone's always been at the top of the money list on it, tour. It has set the standard. It really has. It'd be lovely to get that across the board on the season. Yeah. Takes a lot of work to raise that much money, though. Certainly does. Barella with a nice birdie putt on 16. Burr, one of his own. A little wind shift there for Burr. Felt like a slight headwind. Saw the first puff. Second puff shows a tailwind, which is what I thought it would be originally. and jams that one into the bottom for his own hat trick. Turkey action here towards the end of this round. Trying to keep pace with Macbeth for second. And another birdie on that clean scorecard for your leader. Five strokes over Burr currently two to play. Possible, yeah, but very no, unlikely. It's, come you on, you man. gotta say it's, it's everything possible. is possible. It's possible. It's not likely. It's just possible. The worst Rick is gonna make on this hole is a four. So if that's possible, a two-stroke swing, then you're looking at three. And the worst Rick's gonna get on the next hole is probably gonna be a four or five at worst if on 18. So <laughs> Gannon's gonna have to earn five strokes and two holes when you can only get at maximum a two-stroke swing. I just don't see it happening. At maximum, unless it be aces and Ricky bogeys, then okay, then it opens the door. Yeah, like I said, possible. I guess so, man. <laughs> it's asking for a lot. It's asking a lot. I will give you that. Burr on the box. Going to need to send this one home, and that's hanging out a long ways for an ace, but should settle in nice for no too much speed. Game over, Ian. Do you believe me now? I do. All right. I do. Barella.
thought we were going to see another drone throw in. I thought so as well. That was tracking coming in hot for AB and OB to the drop zone. Once again, the roller coaster continues for Anthony Barella today. Advantage Macbeth in that second place battle. Yeah, it certainly Burr. does because he's getting bogey at best. You mm -hmm. don't see the throw in really happening from the drop zone very often here at 17. And 18 is a tough three. Hard one to make birdie. Orem. Hangs that one out wide as well. This crossing wind is really not letting him swing back. Just inside circle one for Matteo. Waisaki. Last to tee, going felon. Oh, no, he slowed down. Barry Wyatt out of Rick's hand. Just does get in bounds. Outside circle one, circle two putt for Rick. Not that it really matters. Safety was the first priority job done. Mm -hmm. It has been a, a really entertaining day at Eureka Lake. Yeah, this drive off the bat for uh, AB was, I thought, toasted as soon as it left his hand. You usually don't see people going so aggressive to the basket, but that thing flipped over right on time. Monster drive out of AB to get things rolling. This putt for par for Gannon Burr. Save mm. after the OB drive. Don't see that often, Macbeth. On death work. Yeah. All the death putt buckets. Death putt. This, Wysocki. This kicked it off. That, right here. that was absolutely the kickstarter for Ricky Wysocki to blow the doors open. Gannon Burr with the drop zone throw in. Hardly ever oh. see this or even hear about it. Stick it in there, big fella. Listen to that crowd reaction. This epic shot right here on the Eric hole from Ricky Wysocki, the two fingers, one hopper nearly in, just shy of an ace. And fireworks popping all over the course. Macbeth up ahead on the water tower, trying to spike it in and make a push. Wasn't able to get it. There it is. Parked under the basket. Drop zone is where you will find Barella and Burr. It is a 195 foot shot. Par saves not likely. Hardly ever see him. Be pretty amazing to have those two par saves on your card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same disc. Same disc. Gonna have to test the OB line a little bit on the high side, that overstable disc. Can't throw it right at the basket. Job done from the drop zone, Brilla next. On 18, Macbeth. Well, he hit down the roller. This is getting up towards out of bounds. Oh. Let me see if we've got a U disc update for you. Ah. Uh, on the fairway after two throws, one OB for Macbeth. So Macbeth doing Burr a favor there on 18. a tough par save from that position. Bogey likely there for Paul, which means Burr could tie with a par on 18. Grab Solo second with a birdie finish. Paul, please. Doing? Why, Saki for two. And that headwind, oh, that is out of bounds. Rick putted his second OB. He will have this for bogey now. 
No, he didn't. He did. It looked very OB. Wow. Yes. Yeah, putting for bogey, circle one. Oh, Rick with the air ball come. Philo. Eh, yeah, <laughs> <Burr> had landed <laughs> safe, man. I know, man. I told if you it was he had stuck that in there tight for a two, this uh -huh. could have changed a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Rick's going to drop to 26. Burr could have gotten to 24. Yeah, luckily he's got some strokes to absorb the, the blow up here. Mm -hmm. Or him for birdie. Un able to get it to drop this headwind on this green is getting everybody that's it how ricky is. got ob as well it just sailed, sailed right over the right over yeah. yep saw it happen earlier with kyle and i don't know if he was watching but sometimes you got to keep your eyes on what's happening out in front of you too barella to save four yeah. maybe with the tailwind put able to find the height Put him in solo fourth. Saki puts home the double. He's back to 26 now. That will be three, four clear of Burr. Excuse me as he drops in bogey. Thank you. That's going to leapfrog over Gannon Burr now. Solo second. Except Philo. He threw OB off a tee on no. 18. This roller, it looked like it just got blown up the hill by that wind. Mm -hmm. This is a tough place to try to save par from. This is going to take a Herculean effort for Macbeth to get anywhere near the green. Yeah, Paul! Oh. He likes none of it. He's going to catch the canopy up high, make some progression, but... Up, up and down five, best case up now. Up and down five for Paul. So, wow. Favorite They're trying to make it interesting for us, but it's pretty much a done story as far as the dub's concerned for Ricky Wysocki. He's a par away from collecting his third, right. first ever three-peat, I believe, at the Ledgestone, isn't it? Three? It's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. I don't think anybody else has won three in a row. Nope. Third win on the season at the Elite Series anyway. Right. Rick kind of setting the pace on tour. He will take that points lead, like you mentioned earlier. Yes, he will. Going to leapfrog over Calvin Heinberg, who's bumped his way up into that top 10 with a solid performance these last couple of rounds. That super, super hot round over at Northwood Black really got him back into the conversation, and he's crept up five more spots today. But it's going to be a Ricky Wysocki's lead for this tour series. Klein into the green on 18. He's that to hustle left. Hurry. Oh. It's overly safe. Well, it's a nice kick down the hill. Good kick. Still going to be a lengthy putt. Yeah. Middle of circle two. Possibly ceiling issues as well on the way. Yeah, and water behind. Options for Kyle Klein. Does it? Does he need it? Will it do anything for him? It would tie him with Ellis. And actually dropping back, he's got a lot of room to play with. So if he checks U-Disc, he should probably run that putt. He is four clear of eighth place. Brandon Lotta, yeah, yeah. He's got plenty of breathing room. Mm-hmm. There is Burr likely checking U-Disc as well. Battling with this man, Macbeth, who is throwing his fourth already. Yeah, pretty routine up and down here for Macbeth. Play it just a little bit on the right side. There you go, slow drift, ground play, check up. Bogey earned for Macbeth. It'll be up to Gannon Burr to make par better. Mm -hmm. a par and they are tied a birdie in solo second for Burr. Canoe crew out in Eureka Lake. Are you a canoe or kayak man, Philo? Well, neither. I'm not the, the best at the water sports. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not for any serious or <laughs> stereotypical reasons. <laughs> I just didn't get a lot of, I love the water, man. Yeah. Yeah, my family's from the Caribbean. We're not afraid of the water. That's it's right, man. Don't really get a lot of opportunities, man, minus a little bit of surfing here and there yeah. in my younger days. Yep. It's kind of dry in Los Angeles. <laughs> I did most of my canoeing and kayaking <laughs> up in the Northwest growing up. There you go. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of water down where I live now. Moriarty into the green. Solid 
way. Yep. Randon next. I've done some rowing of a boat over in Finland a few times. Oh, nice. A couple lake houses, do cool. some fishing, you know. That's fun. Heck yeah, man. I don't think I've actually ever tried a kayak. Speaking of Randon Lottafilo, he has earned his place into the USDGC. My man. Along with uh, Sullivan, Tipton, Andrew Marweed, and Kevin Kiefer. Excellent. All punching their ticket to the, the big show at the end of the That's year. That's a great group of guys to get it late. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those guys are grinders right there. That whole list of names. That's awesome. Back on the tee, Orem. Let's see where Orem's shape. He's currently tied with Ellis, one behind Barella, one ahead of Klein. So this this matters for Matt coming down the stretch. Yes, it does. Blisters that one up the left side. Great height. It's going to make good progress. That's a really nice landing zone for Matteo. The lower you are on the hill, the more airspace you have to make your way up towards the green. Get higher up to the right, and the window really starts to shrink. Burr takes the box. Put some tushy in that one. Too much, though. Uh, rolled over on it too hard. A little bit up on the high side. There are some sidearm angles in there. Hard for the righty backhand play. Barella. Full send there from Barella. Fights through the tree and still making ground. That was some friendly tree action. That actually. was. That was just a lot of heat, man. He beat the tree with speed. Got a little bit of a window, and that's a good place to be. Waisaki. Last tee shot on his way to the win. That's fine as long as it doesn't cut roll. There you go. Macbeth to finish with bogey. Tie. 830s in his last 10 holes, tried to string something together. Did a pretty solid job to get himself into that podium conversation. Yeah. And Kyle Klein trying to get Wad's disc out of the tree. Oh, when you're shooting that thing up there, that's. Oh, well done. Sometimes they don't come back down, though. Right? He smacks himself in the face <laughs> with the stick. <laughs> that wasn't quite so smooth, but hey. had a way to help your buddy out. Yeah. Here's Kyle to finish with a four. <laughs> Not the day he wanted, but, you know, an event he can build on going forward. For sure. That's what I was saying. Always something positive to take away. It's, right. it's hard to have your best game on this stage. Randon Lada. And his day, we'll be seeing him at USDGC. That's what makes it so impressive to see a young Gannon Burr just pretty much step into the spotlight and consistently, week after week, event after event, mm -hmm. in the mix, in the hunt. You know, those are anomalies. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys got the game to find themselves in this position, but it's hard to stick around, like just stay there for the whole tournament. White Saki second, making solid progress on the fairway. That's all you needed. 120 foot up shot. Scoop up that par and hoist up a trophy in 10 grand. <laughs> Should have a burr shot next, it looks like. Again, in 410 to the pin. He wants to get up and down and get solo second. Well, you don't need to get all of it, right? Give yourself a Pit circle's clear. edge putt, you know? Somewhere in that 30-foot range. Just trying to look for a 
big opening, as much airspace as you can find and shape something up there. Brian, what are you seeing here for Gannon on his second shot? Oh, we, we, excuse me, we, we lost Brian. Excuse me there, my fault. Big shot for Burr. Gonna need to put the pumper nickel in this one. Skinny line. Oh, this I is think edge. perfect. Sit down. That's oh, gone. Too much pumper nickel. Dang. That was such a good looking shot. Such a skinny line. You're talking matter of feet to hit that line. Consolation prize. Close. Par put. He can get a par and yeah, stay tied with Paul. The yeah. Water plus yeah. the rock line, so mm -hmm. it should bring him in a couple of meters closer. Probably about a six or seven meter putt to save par. Should keep him knotted up with Mythbeth, tied for second. Mm -hmm. Our Bushnell crew has that at a 30 foot putt for Gannon. Orem from 360. Mm. Such a good effort there from Matteo. One tree to beat. So probably still in the fairway. Maybe back edge of circle two. Yeah. It's a scary putt. It likely par finish there for Orem. Yes, sir. I'll give him a fifth place tie with Ellis. Over to Barella. 335. Firebird. Nailed it. Tell you, and I've had more of those days Anthony Barilla's having than the other side of the coin. I mean, that's the day of most people, that, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to be Ricky Wysocki and Paul McBeth and, you know, the 1050 crew, the Chris Dickersons and the James Conrads and Eagle you know, McMahons. Eagle McMahons and Simon Lazats and, you know, like those guys. We don't know how they do it. I don't get it, you know. Yeah. I don't know what the difference is, but they just do it, you know. They have that gear. They have that drive, that sharpness, the focus, the game, the skill set, the confidence. And it just exudes out of them when they're in that position. You know what I yeah. mean? I can say, like, you pressure just, turns Ricky into a diamond, you know. He doesn't crumble. I'm not saying that. AB crumbled per se. I mean, Things, he kind of beat himself on some shots right. here and there, but I wouldn't call it crumble, right? I, I didn't mean it. Right. AB was crumbling. No, no, more. no. I'm not saying. I, I'm saying. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm not saying AB's crumbling. Yeah. It was a rocky day. Mm -hmm. He had plenty of great moments, but man, the ones that got away from him were so detrimental. They were just killing all that momentum that he was building. He was. And that's just not something you see guys like Ricky and Paul typically do yeah. once they're in the driver's seat, once they're leading the tournament. They just don't typically relinquish. They don't let people come back on them like that. They don't let them put the pressure on them. They set the tone. They, they create the pace. Those guys march up the fairway with their heads up, confident, looking Thanks, like this buddy. is my tournament to win. And I think once these younger guys soak some of that up, you know, you don't have to be exactly like them, uh -huh. but you got to own it. Remember how confident Simon was sounding down in his little hot stretch in the season? He was talking it like he wanted it, like yeah. he meant it. Like, uh -huh. hey, I'm here to win, you know? And you, I'm not saying that they don't have that energy about it, you know? But they just, they don't have that same look on their face, the same demeanor as you see a Ricky Wysocki and a Simon and a Paul McBeth. They'll learn that, I hope, quickly, because they're going to be monsters more than they are now. There's a couple of the most talented guys on the planet right now. Anthony Barella and Gannon Burr right there. They'll figure it out. A lot of time in those young careers. Plenty of time. Love both of their games. Such a pleasure to watch them do what they do. They make disc golf and look easy. I wonder what the difference is between the two, and I think it's that mental toughness and that what happens in between the ears and your emotions. 
What's going on right here, Philo? I'm not sure if they're thinking somebody might have possibly slid OB. Maybe Gannon's shot ran a little long. He did go in the water, but maybe they're looking for a mark, right? Maybe they're talking about the, the rock line again. Yeah. So now Burr for a second place tie with Paul. Solo second finish for Paul McBeth on the chase guard. Quite a run. Could never put it past him. He's too close to really count him out. Mm -hmm. Burr. <laughs> solo third for a 17-year-old. You forget that sometimes. 17 years old. I have what were you doing at 17? <laughs> I didn't even know disc golf existed, and I was going to high school two blocks away from Veterans Park in Silmar right there. That's really? Rico's home course. And Two blocks away, never knew it was there. I wish I had. Next down, open champion, Ricky Lysaki. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, for the third consecutive time, your 2022 Discraft Ledgestone Opian champion, Ricky Lysaki. I am joined here on the green of 18 by the Ledgestone Open champion, Ricky Wysocki. Ricky, it's been a long week of disc golf, and I can see a sigh of relief coming out of you. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it kind of like was blackout mode there in the middle stretch. I, I got a lot of birdies, and I uh, really set myself apart, like I said I was going to do yesterday. And uh, that's what I know I needed to do and, and put the pressure on everybody else. And, you know, I feel like that's where I set myself apart is late in the round, uh, the final day. I can make the shots happen and, uh, you know, put myself in position to win. And I'm glad I did that. The fans are always so interested in the thing that you just described as blackout mode. We saw you, if it's what I understand it to be, multiple stretches this tournament in that mode. Can you describe it from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that you know, when you're in that mode, you got to capitalize and get as many birdies, make as many good shots as you can because you go in and out of that throughout the tournament. And uh, the longer you can stay in that blackout mode and uh, – make great shots that's where you're going to set yourself apart and i feel like i can consistently get in that mode and um yeah i wish i knew the switch where i could do it every weekend but i'm thankful i could do it this weekend and uh yeah it was a great building block for for des moines in the next couple of tournaments coming up well speaking of the next couple of tournaments we have the major back in emporia where you played pretty much blackout mode the entire final round in the same outfit <laughs> um what does this mean for your confidence and, and your your body feeling uh, going into that tournament well, yeah, I think that um, for me, it's, you know, I'm not feeling super healthy, which is, uh, you know, another accomplishment in itself. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I pulled something in my back, so my shots were not coming out very clean, and I doinked a couple putts, uh, pretty much gimme range for me, that was very frustrating. But uh, I fought through it, and, uh, you know, if, sometimes it felt like someone was stabbing me with a knife, on, you know, when I was straddle putting. It just, that's what it felt like. But no excuses. Uh, I came back, and, I, I, you know, I, I, my other parts of my game really made up for the fact that I missed those couple putts, and I'm thankful for that. Well, this is your third Elite Series victory of the year. You've had a lot of adversity to fight against. One last word, what's the biggest life lesson you've learned this year? Uh, you know, it's just, you know, fighting through injuries. For me, it's, it, it, I, I've played very few tournaments healthy, but, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle when it comes to that. But that's, that's sports, that's, that's athletics. Disc golf isn't a, necessarily a high-contact sport, but we're putting a lot of strain on our bodies. And, you know, the more you play, the more, you know, your body's going to break down. You just got to eat healthy and, uh, you know, keep my health and wellness game plan up. And uh, I'm here to stay. Congratulations, Rick, and we'll see you out there in Des Moines. Let's go. Wrap your legs, baby! Tweaked one of them. What a day from Rick.
Ricky Wysocki continuing to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. We heard him talk about that yeah, back yeah, in uh, right. Emporia before when his body wasn't feeling quite right and gutted up and grinded his way through a heck of a performance and does it again here at the Ledgestone, taking it down for the third time, the three-peat for Rick. In dominating fashion, too. Dominating, yeah. He really just dropped the hammer on those cats once they made it to the back nine. It was mm -hmm. a tight battle, it felt like, and there was still a glimmer of hope for the other competitors, but... Six birdies in a row on that Shut back nine down. stretch from hole eight to 13 or 14. Yeah, 13, just mm -hmm. light show for Rick. And he just said, au revoir, see you guys. Good luck next week. We'll see you in Des Moines. That, that's what it kind of seemed like. I put yeah. the hammer down and he certainly did. just walked he gave away no from chance. the rest. Yeah, yeah. A glimmer of hope for Gannon Burr at the end, but he throws it OB, so it didn't matter. Ricky yeah. takes the dub or just didn't matter. He played so strong when he needed to when it when the chips were on the table. Yep. Well-earned, well-deserved victory for Ricky Wysocki. Yeah, congrats to that, man. We're going to take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll have the OTB after show as well as the OTB shot of the day. Back in just a few. Grip, Europe's number one disc golf shop, is now available in the United States. Our selection is constantly growing as we build on strong relationships throughout the disc golf industry. It doesn't matter the question you have, where you're from, or your skill level. Power Grip is here to help. Shop us online at PowerGripUSA.com. dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future to make that happen. MVP Black Hole Pro is the best portable basket on the market. It's easy to transport. You can set it up in under 60 seconds, no problem. It's perfect for any sort of practice putting. I would recommend it for anyone who needs a portable basket. The Millennium Draco is an overstable nine-speed utility driver that's great for hosers, backhand or forehand. Get yours at golfdisc.com. want to be the best, you win world. It doesn't happen to a lot of people, and when it does, it's, it's huge.
all Ricky Wysocki. It's been a Ricky Wysocki show today on a Sunday championship round out here at the Ledgestone Open Eureka Lake Temp Course. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. We got the two in the early ones and then had a bit of a drought five pars in a row. Then Ricky Wysocki turned on the afterburners. Holes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All birdies. Got a double turkey. Blackout mode. As he likes to call it, going unconscious on the golf course. All he sees is fairways and chains. Hyper-focused. Dime after dime, lawn dart after lawn dart. Ricky Wysocki really earned this victory today. Shots like this, stress-free putts. Well executed, well anticipated shots like this. Hanging it out over the water, full trust in his disc, finishing on the appropriate side of the target even. Bullseye. In the bullseye. You know something that's really awesome? What's that? Think about what Rick's been doing lately. What's he been doing when people get a hole in one? Oh, donating a thousand dollars. Rack. So my man yeah. just won ten of them, and he's coughing up seven because there were seven this weekend. How about that? So I want to thank my boy Pete Cash and Casey's finest for yeah. dropping that little nugget. That's really awesome. The generosity from Ricky Wysocki showing up, taking down the big check, and Playing giving away charity. seventy percent of it back to the, you know, to the foundation. The kids, that's really man. awesome, man. That's a lot Super of discs cool. and a lot of kids' hands. That's, a lot of stuff, man. That is really cool. I got another stat, man. This is the fourth time Ricky has won three or more disc golf pro tour events in a single year. Yeah, sixteen, seventeen, and twenty-one, twenty-two. There we go. He's been good for, for a while. He's still Obviously. at the top. Obviously, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Mm -mm. It's going to be a while till we see guys like Ricky and Paul McBeth completely fall off when they're yeah. just irrelevant. It's yeah. going to be probably when they get around my age in their early 40s, you know, and things start to really change for them. <laughs> Look at that start you, aging. <laughs> in your late 30s, I mean, your prime is like from that 25 to 32, 33, 35 windows, like the yeah. prime of your athleticism, mm -hmm. you know, and you can maintain it and hang on to it for a few years after that, but it's definitely going to start declining yeah. once you hit 40, you know. Golfers will tend to like hold on a little longer than other sports. Where do, you, where do you think disc golf falls in that line? I think it's a little more athletic than golf in the, a more dynamic movement, maybe. I think it's so similar, man, honestly. I mean, I guess we got Johnny McRae still right, killing it at 50. Is he going to keep up with Ricky Wysocki and Paul McBeth week after week? I Probably mean, not. You know? Maybe I mean, not It's not that week. he can't. It's just that week after week yeah. after week to be able to keep up that level of sharp play. The physicality that these guys play with, you know, like the physical abilities that these guys have. I'm not trying to knock Johnny McRae at all, but it's just a different level. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just a different level, man. And he's a fantastic player. You know, you put Barry Schultz in a field like this and he might get into a top 15, but he's got to play perfect golf. Right. Doesn't you have know? quite the distance these guys have. Exactly. Yeah. That's such an advantage. A slightly lower ceiling. It's not the same yeah. game that it was 10 or 12 years ago when we played a lot of deuce or die style courses where you had to show up mm -hmm. and execute routine, basic disc golf shots over and over. And that was where the pressure lies. Could you oh, okay. make pets? Could you get the disc close enough to the basket to make putts? Now it's, can you get the disc far enough down the fairway to give yourself a chance to even get to the green? You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a different game. And the, the class and the, you know, what's been happening over the last five or ten years, it's, it's been so much fun to watch. It's been awesome to watch the game evolve all around. Mm -hmm. Talk about A.B., man. What do you think, what do you think about his day? Not Rocky. the final round day he wanted, but no. we have seen worse final rounds from him in sure. similar situations. He didn't throw in the towel on himself today. Right. That's you know? what I'm saying. Like, he kept in it. He kept his head in the game. He still shot a two down. We've yeah, seen over par rounds from A.B. in this position. Happen. So and hopefully he's growing. He's absolutely growing. And you saw a lot of that in how A.B. recomposed himself time and time again when things were mm -hmm. starting to come undone. It was a roller coaster round for A.B. Nothing really went his way consistently. He'd get some That's momentum, true. mental air, cough a stroke or two up. Yep. Regain his composure, come right back, smack the course in the mouth for a few holes, get to a relatively routine side arm throws it ob you know it's just yeah. like those things you can't have happen when you're going to take down a tournament when you're trying to chase down a ricky wysocki so yeah i gotta gotta be error free or pretty close to it yeah close up the unforced errors at, at least right that's all mental man yeah that's sure all is. mental otb shot of the daytime 
I'd guess a Ricky Wysocki near skip. It's got to be Ricky Wysocki's putt on eight or the Burr throw in on nine. Those Burr's throw in on nine was absolutely epic. I mean, this is by far the highest skill shot shot of the day, right? I mean, he really planned that out perfectly. Jackknife that thing right into the bottom of the bucket. There we he got is. five angles for you guys to check out this smasher from the drop zone. Yak it, yak it, yak it. I remember the first time we watched it, it was from the drone Philo. Yeah, it was. He hung that thing way up in the sky. You typically won't see that. Look how wide he throw that thing. Man, that was three feet wide the time of the day. Trusting that overstable A2 to fight back in bounds, and it did more than that. Smooth little half swing from the gallery. Got no action from the gallery. High fives, Caddy, Ricky. Good sportsmanship from Rick to give him a little fist bump. Yeah. It's really easy to turn the back and walk away on a guy when he does something like that when you're in the heat of the moment. And Gannon is actually from Iowa, where the tour will be headed next, Philo. That is. Hometown advantage for Gannon Bird. It's some 35 minutes down the road, Indianola. Beautiful course, Pickard Park. Absolutely phenomenal piece of property we get to utilize yeah, of what they do to that course. It's I called so it a blend fun. of like Idlewild and Jonesboro. It is a bit of a blend. I'd say it's a little bit shorter and a bit more technical than those two courses. Okay. Idlewild is you know, not the longest course, mm -hmm. but super technical. Obviously, Jonesboro is just log bomber's paradise. Got to have a big arm to survive out there. Yeah, you do. So, yeah, it's going to be fun to see uh, what Gannon Burr can do in his own backyard. Bring it on in next week, Des Moines Challenge. There may be some tickets left. I heard this one was on the sellout list fast. The Des Moines really? disc golfers, yeah, Iowa disc there's... golfers, they love to come out and spectate and show support. So it's going to be a, an awesome show next week. It was a huge gallery last year. Massive galleries. Yep, lining that 18 fairway. Unfortunately, I won't be there to see you guys, but I hope you have a fun weekend. Yeah, I'll catch you. I've got a couple weeks off. I'll be back for Worlds. That's what's up. Yeah, that should be fun. Uh, it's been an awesome weekend. We thank you guys as always tuning in and spending your weekend with us definitely hats off congratulations one more time to ricky weiss stocking your 2022 legendstone champion what a week we will get out of here but first we got to thank nate heinhold his entire legendstone crew making this possible all our disc golf network crew on the ground in the production booth working crazy hours for philo and myself we will get out of here thanks for watching everybody catch you in the next one